The Bellator MMA cage is back in the Bay Area. Big crowd expected to be on hand for a blockbuster event culminating with a championship doubleheader. Bellator 277 will feature the rematch between newly minted featherweight champion AJ McKee and the number one contender now, Patricio Pitbull. He is 5-0 in rematches. And also tonight, it is the $1 million final of the light heavyweight world. World Grand Prix, the champion Vadim Nemkov has successfully defended his belt throughout the tourney tonight. He faces Corey Anderson, who is 3-0 inside the Bellator MMA cage. And speaking of the 205-pound weight class, that's where we kick off preliminary action between Theo Haig making his professional debut and Alan Benson, who was victorious in his lone foray in Bellator MMA. All right, John McCarthy, let's go to the tail of the tape. Very simple. Take a look at that 76-inch reach compared to 69. That is a huge advantage. We'll see if he can take advantage of that in his pro debut. My mom likes it when I say my name. I'm Marlo Ronaldo. Here's Michael C. Williams. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bellator 277 as we kick off the prelims tonight here at SAP Center in San Jose, California. We'll kick off the night in the light heavyweight division. Set for three five-minute rounds, introducing the blue corner. At six foot, weighing in 203.4 pounds, his professional record one and two. He fights out of Castro Valley, California. Alan Beeston Benson. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner. At six foot two, weighing in 201.5 pounds, making his professional debut. He fights out of Campbell by way of San Jose, California, Theo Haig. In charge of the action, your referee, Mike Beltran. Stay back, stay back, stay back, Theo. All right, gentlemen, first round. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? Hell, let's go. Theo Haig in the red gloves, Alan Benson in the blue, and judging by the response of the crowd, Theo Haig, nice timing of the jab, going for the takedown attempt. A lot of supporters, John, and he has already earned the first takedown of the fight. Theo Haig has a very good wrestling background. Obviously, if you're training at AKA, that's going to always be worked upon, even to bring it up to more speed. It is what he's going to live and die on as a, as a professional fighter. So right away, got the takedown, is exactly where he wants to be. Bay Area born and raised. Didn't really start seriously training until he was 21, now 25 and fighting for the first time as a professional, went 1-0 as an amateur with a submission win. Meanwhile, for Alan Benson, who has to find a way to try to reverse position here, John, his lone victory in Bellator has been well flanked by losses, coming off a reverse crescent kick KO against Justin Berry. So he is hoping for better luck this time, not off to a great start. Not off to a great start. You know, he's got it. He's half guard, but he's holding on instead of trying to either use that cage to get himself back to his feet. When you're up against it like that, you've got to start digging that underhook, getting a hand down, start using that as a balance point right now. If he's just going to be underneath Dio Haig, this is going to be a long, nasty round for him. Interestingly, Haig must have done his homework because when I asked him about a prediction for this fight, he said spinning back kick so he must have known that Barry uh, coming off a uh, kick KO loss but uh, he's getting his kicks right now on the canvas just controlling Benson and now Benson giving up his back the hooks are in John and Haig looking for the rear naked choke very nice transition he forced him into that position knew exactly the direction that he was going to be going now he's starting to sink in that rear naked yeah, it's on the jaw line, but he's going to be able to make it work. Yep. Theo Haig, take a bow. Oh, he's going to do better. 
He's running, he's running the cage. A lot of energy still left in the Theo Hague. And Nothing like that first big win, baby. And then a submission, victory, much to the delight. A lot of uh, Theo Hague supporters in attendance early. And the reaction says it all. Yeah, this is where it started off. Looked for that single leg. Nice job of actually bumping him off the cage with a single leg, dragging that leg out, dropping him to the mat, and then he just systematically worked towards a better position. Finally got him to turn. He was ready for it. And when he did, sinks in that arm. First it was on the chin, on the jawline. Nice job of hiding his locking hand, and then he just kept on squeezing till it just popped right into the neck. Nice tap, beautiful submission win, 1-0. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Bellator cage. It comes to an end officially. Two minutes, eight seconds. Round number one, the tap by way of a rear naked choke by submission. He starts as an undefeated professional, Theo Hey. 28 years ago today, Scott Coker, president of Bellator MMA, began his tenure as a promoter in the Bay Area with a kickboxing event. In the main event was Javier Mendez, who's now, well, one of the top coaches at AKA and American Kickboxing Academy's Theo Haig just won his professional debut via first round submission. We are off and running here at the Shark Tank. It's time to say hello to Amanda Guerra at the Fight Test. Hey, Maura, what a good night we have ahead of us. Yes, I'm Amanda Guerra here with two-time world champion Josh Thompson at the Fight Desk. And this is what we have been waiting for for the past eight months, the rematch of the biggest fight in Bellator history. At the end of the night, we will watch AJ McKee go up against Patricio Pitbull again. Josh, what are you most excited to watch unfold in this fight tonight? I want to see if Patricio can remedy what happened in the first fight. That's That will speak volumes of what he went back to the drawing board and decided to do to come back in for this fight. Now with AJ, I just want to see if he's going to make the adjustments as a young fighter, knowing that the first fight went exactly how he would love to have went. If it doesn't go that way again tonight, will he be able to withstand mentally how to deal with that? Look, fighters' confidences are key, but it's easy to say, oh, I could do it again. But then to go out there and put pressure on yourself to do it again, he's saying a second round finish. Got to be very cautious. Pitbull, by all means, has the fighting IQ. He is the veteran. AJ McKee just turned 27 years old a week ago. He got the million dollars. He got the belt. We'll see what happens tonight. Let's send it back to you, Morrow. All right, let's uh, get right to the tail of the tape for our second matchup in the featherweight division. Laird Anderson, he's 1-0. He takes on JT Donaldson, who was 4-5. Laird Anderson is a, his father is someone I started jujitsu with 30 years ago, 23 years of age to 29. Both young fighters. This should be fun. I'm not old. You're old. Here's <laughs> Michael C. Williams. Someone lied to you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here at Bellator 277, the prelims roll on. We'll do three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing the blue corner. At 5'8", weighing in 144.6 pounds, his professional record 4 and 5. He fights out of Livermore, California, Grandma's boy, JT Donaldson. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner. At 5'7", weighing in 145 pounds, even as a professional, he's 1 and 0. Oh. He fights out of right here in San Jose, Ule. In charge, your referee, Frank Trigg. And round one, Anderson. 
Davis, who made his professional and Bellator MMA debut in September 2018, defeating Ricky Abdelaziz via split decision. And while Donaldson may have a sub-500 record, he comes back to Bellator with two consecutive wins. Well, the one thing for you to look at with Laird Anderson is when he did that win, look, he, this kid grew up on the mats, and his jiu-jitsu is really good. But the stand-up was definitely not there, so he took the time off, got good with the stand-up, and now watch what he does in that stand-up game. He's comfortable, he's got great technique. You saw him with a lot of the feints. He just defended the take down temp of JT Donaldson. Anderson, a huge anime fan. I know my nephew Massimo watching back in beautiful British Columbia introduced me to Baki, the anime about mixed martial artist Baki Hanma. So hopefully Anderson has the heart and fortitude of Baki Hanma here in his second Bellator MMA appearance. And the big difference right now for Anderson is this. right now he's in this beautiful position. He's got the double unders, he can get the takedown. Even if he doesn't, he's going to feel comfortable on his feet. That's That says a lot about your confidence as a fighter. Tenacious in his pursuit, but yet, like you mentioned, composure, a knee up the middle from the fence delivered by Donaldson, delivering some short knees, trying to disrupt the mindset of Anderson as Anderson looking to keep Donaldson against the fence and Donaldson with a swiping elbow strike. Nice, the face. nice short elbow strike by Donaldson. And Donaldson levels. He's done a great job of staying on his feet right now. He's working hard to make sure this fight does not hit the ground. He's been in there against the very best. Right? Got the fence there. Takedown by Anderson immediately on the back of Donaldson. One hook is in. Very nice job by Donaldson. Remains calm, knows that he's in a position. Oh, that was a beautiful knee up high. A series of right hands from Anderson. And did you notice how he laced the arm behind the back to land that ball? Beautiful technique. Donaldson, lone Bellator MMA appearance against A.J. McKee, who headlines Bellator 277 in a rematch against Patricio Pitbull. Immediately, Anderson takes the back, has the hooks in, and is in dominant position. But Donaldson, again, able to almost get back up to his feet before going back down to one knee. He's and now, here's now. The, that choke is in. Rear naked choke attempt to tap. And the second fight, the second rear naked choke submission. Both of them coming in the first round. Is it going to be that kind of preliminary night? Fight fans aren't complaining. That is fantastic finishes. You know, and you got to give JT Donaldson a lot of credit. He yes. was stopping a lot of things there, but the tide just kept flowing and getting higher. And eventually, that one little mistake when you're getting a little bit more tired, it caught up to him. Watch the knee. Look at that. Look at the face down. That knee lands beautifully, and that was the start of the downfall. That really caught him. Take a look how his arm is laced. Then he gets that. This is the first takedown. This is the one that JT was able to get up from. But this one right here, you saw Anderson get the back, and once he got the back, a couple of shots to soften him up, opens the neck up, and here comes the rear naked choke. That is palm to palm tight, switches it, make it tighter. Beautiful technique. Two and oh. Laird Anderson, 23 years of age, training at American Kickboxing Academy. They're off to a great start tonight. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes to an end officially. Two minutes, 44 seconds into round number one. The tap by way of a rear naked choke. The winner by submission, Laird Anderson. Laird Anderson and JT Donaldson exchanging pleasantries. And uh, Amanda, two fights, two rear naked choke wins. What are the odds on making it three in a row tonight? 
very sure about that, Moro. But let's talk about what we have coming up tonight. Maybe we'll see one of those submissions. Uh, they have been fantastic so far. All right, here is the fight card tonight. We are inching closer to the biggest event of the year. AJ McKee, Patricio Pitbull, too. But there is not just one, but two title fights on the line tonight. At the conclusion, the Bellator Light Heavyweight World Grand Prix, the two best light heavyweight fighters in the world going at it. We have the champion, Vadim Nemkov and Corey Anderson. Josh, let's talk about this fight. We are so excited about this. I can't believe we have two incredible fights tonight. It's actually, the whole card is great. Uh, in this one in particular, though, what are the advantages that each fighter has? So Corey Anderson, I would say the wrestling and definitely the cardio. One thing he prides himself on is pushing the pace, getting in there and grinding on fighters. That that grinding mentality that wrestlers, most wrestlers have. That's where I'd say that he has the advantage. But with Nemkov, Nemkov, he's going to pick and choose his shots. He's got to be very patient, make sure he doesn't overextend himself. Okay, and he's got to make sure that he's touch on the chin and utilizing those leg kicks, leg kicks to try to slow Corey Anderson down. How do you stop the takedown of Corey Anderson? Well, Nemkov's got the ability to stuff the takedowns, but he's got to be careful when they come back up that Corey Anderson, he, what I meant was Corey Anderson's got to be careful because when they come back up on the body locks, Nemkov is very dangerous in those inside leg trips and those body lock takedowns. So it's not just one direction for the wrestling department. They're going to kind of nullify each other, but that straight up folk style, collegiate style wrestling is going to go to Corey Anderson. It's going to be a fun one to watch. Moro, prelims have been incredible so far. Let's send it back down to you. They have been lightning fast. Let's see what these two featherweights have in store for us. Socrates Hernandez out of San Jose. He's about to meet Rogelio Luna in an all-Golden State affair. Yeah, pro debut for Luna, 0-1 for Socrates, but we watched that loss, and it was a great fight against Bobby Cerrone. So expect good things out of Mr. Hernandez. Here's Michael C. Williams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight here in San Jose, California, the prelims continue. We'll stay right here in the featherweight division, set for three five-minute rounds, introducing the blue corner. At five foot nine, he weighed in 145 pounds even tonight. He makes his professional debut fighting out of Richmond, California, Rogelio Rodi Luna. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at five foot eleven, weighing in 145.4 pounds as a professional. Early on, he stands at 0 and 1, fighting out of San Jose, presenting Socrates Hernandez. In charge, your referee Blake Rice. Hernandez 0-1 in Bellator while Luna is making his professional debut. Three five-minute rounds at 145. You ready? Ready? Fight! Sharp jab. And boy, they come up throwing with bad intentions and Hernandez getting the better of the exchange although Luna willing to step into the so-called danger zone as well. Fast start here, John. Yeah, Luna's, but he's dropping his hand and his chin is out there so he needs to take his time. He throws those kicks. Make sure that you're in the distance. Cannot counter. And already early, Socrates Hernandez mixing up his attack, John. Diversifying, but Luna rips a nice shot to the body and he is proving to be as game as they come here in his professional debut. This is what I was talking about when we watched Socrates the first time. He and Bobby Cerrone will put on a show. Well, he and Luna looking to do the same and already doing the same. You know, we talked about it earlier. It's the 37th anniversary of Hagler versus Hearns. And not to say that they are by any means of the stature, but boy, they're doing a pretty good impression they're so far. Actually getting after it, man. This is awesome right now. Drops Incredible. the mouth. And you got to figure for Luna, being this is his pro debut. Oh, adrenaline. amazing exchanges. Nice Both shot. of them catching the other. Nice, 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 nice. Bobby, 
Luna being very aggressive right now, going after him. He needs to settle down just a little bit. Pick your shots. Right hand to the body. Nice yeah. jab popping. Socrates Hernandez is head back. It is fistic fireworks. The order of this fight. And we are just getting started. Nice one two again. But it's Hernandez who catches him with a sweeping right one. John, they are toe to toe. Knee up the middle by Hernandez. And Luna responds in kind, but it's Hernandez that's been doing a better job of mixing up his attack, utilizing all of his weapons. Yeah, absolutely right. This is the second time that Luna has lost that mouthpiece, meaning that mouthpiece is not that in your mouth, sir. well put together. <laughs> Take a look at those strikes right there. Luna landing at a 47% clip, 39 for Hernandez. I think the big difference, nice. Wow, body. Luna just going to the body, swinging wildly, just biting down on his mouthpiece. And here comes Hernandez, just tremendous stuff. Back and forth, and Luna can take a shot. Luna is wearing a crimson mask right now. His nose bleeding. Sharp jab by Hernandez. And mouthpiece keeps on to pop out. Beautiful shot. Wow, both of them. But it's Hernandez who throws in combination. Also, he's throwing from different angles. Look at what he's throwing. Straight shots. He's coming with the uppercuts, hooks. Overhand right, right uppercut. Right hand by Hernandez. One, two. Defense be damned. Under two minutes left in the first round. And it is a thriller. These guys are just going after it. Socrates reminded me of the pace of a Nate Diaz. He just keeps throwing. Beautiful. Right hand over the top by Luna. Sharp jab splits the guard. Can they maintain this pace? It is featherweight, 145 pounds. The featherweights are center stage in our main event tonight between AJ McGee and Patricio Pitbull, but Hernandez and Luna are looking to steal the show early, John. And Hernandez hit him right along the neckline. That was solid. If he just takes that and brings it a little bit, four inches or so forward, it's gonna land right on the jaw. And here comes Rogelio Luna. And Socrates Hernandez keeping him at bay. The crowd becoming electric here. Those in attendance early. All you can say when watching these guys right now is thank you. Under a minute left in the first round, we reminded you of the 37th anniversary of eight minutes of fury. Marvelous Marvin Hagler versus Thomas Hitman Hearns. That was arguably the greatest round in boxing history. With 39 seconds left, this is definitely a candidate for one of the greatest first rounds in Bellator MMA history. Okay, those guys got a break after three minutes. These guys are still throwing after four and a half. Going after it. Blood and guts fully on display. Socrates Hernandez, Rogelio Lula, as a bit. mano a mano, as we end this incredible opening five minutes of action. Indeed, John, five minutes of hell. Five minutes of non-stop action. I'm looking at Luna going, man, as a pro debut, he's going to end up having an adrenaline dump. He's going so hard. He did not. He just kept throwing. Socrates Hernandez throwing back. Unbelievable. Watch some of these shots. Beautiful jab right there by Socrates. Lands left hand, misses with the right. But Luna came back in this round too. Nice straight right hand, and there was the uppercut. Socrates had more angles, but Luna was landing some of these at the beginning, right at the end. Straight shots down the middle, nice shot. Beautiful left hand again. Neither guy given an inch. Both of them going after it. That was fun. Never have truer words been spoken than when Rogelio Luna told us, I'm gonna give you your money's worth. You will leave entertained.
He's done all of that and more despite being on the receiving end of a, a relentless assault by Socrates Hernandez. And of course, Luna landing his fair share of shots. Oh, you have the unofficial scorecard. How does I, it I, was, I was enjoying it too much. I was I'm going even. If they both landed. Luna might have taken that. That was a great round. Southpaw, Luna walking down Hernandez. Let's go the one, two. Back to Orthodox. And of course, in MMA, you see them swimming to Orthodox and Southpaw because of the threat of the takedowns and all other aspects of the sport, John. Also, a lot of them, their wrestling background, a lot of them, they, they will shoot with their strong leg. Oh, Luna unloading on Hernandez. And finally, some head movement from Socrates Hernandez. But not there, the three punch combination. Punch away to the right. And a left shot by Luna. That hurt him back. And Hernandez continues to come forward. But it's Luna putting on the pressure and putting on the pain. Luna has got a gas tank because he is just throwing shots. Blood squirting out of his nose. He doesn't care. He can't breathe out of it. Breathing out of his mouth. Heavy shots. 30 years of age in his professional debut as a mixed martial artist. And he continues to unload on Socrates Hernandez, who has definitely been hurt in this round, and it has muted his offense a bit. Absolutely. When he landed that shot, take a look at his offensive progression has really slowed down. He's taking a lot of body shots now. Those are all added up. Man, last Saturday on Showtime Championship Boxing, we had a bona fide fight of the year candidate between Sebastian Fedora and Erickson Lubin. And here tonight, an MMA fight of the year candidate breaking out with Rogelio Luna, unloading on Hernandez. How in the hell is Hernandez still standing? I tell you what, the kid has got a chip, but he is hurt. And how can Luna maintain this output? He is throwing everything with bad intentions. Luna's had him been training at 10,000 feet. It's amazing. Just threw a beautiful knee. This guy has got a gas tank. Yeah, and he doesn't care about gas prices here in California because he is pedal to the metal, John. Unbelievable action. This is a good thing for Socrates, this clinch. Let him get his senses back. Slow this pace down. Oh, knee on the exit by Luna, and again he goes on the attack, targeting the head. Socrates Hernandez. Big body shot by Luna. Socrates could not take many more of those. My God. Yeah. Right hand, left, right. And Luna continues to score. Now it's Hernandez going behind. Waist lock by Hernandez trying to thwart the assault of Luna. Fatigue. Pain. Suffering by the to take Luna down. Oh, he's definitely trying to take the back. Luna had his chance to actually spin inside of that. He missed it. He's keep working. Now he's free of it. And Luna again teeing off on Hernandez, backing him up with body shots. Massive blows upstairs. Hernandez coming back, but he just doesn't have the same steam, and yet he takes Luna down. Get himself centered on that back. Looking to resurrect his fortunes in this fight. Under a minute left. Nice job of Luke by Luna to stay calm in that position. Never panic. He's got a baseball grip on that arm. He's trying to hold on to that right arm. He just let go of it. And again, Hernandez looking for that rear naked choke. Looking to spoil what has thus far been an electrifying professional debut for Rogelio Luna. He's got it on the jawline. There's a lot of pressure on that job, but the choke won't work. It's more of a pain situation at that point. In just his professional debut, Rogelio Luna has had to overcome almost everything you can expect in a mixed martial arts fight. Simply 
incredible. Well, you were talking about eight minutes. We now have had ten. <laughs> and you both got mouthpieces out. Mouthpiece. Don't allow no more chain outs, okay? You don't allow no more chain outs. Keep the fight standing. You... Yes, sir. Let's get a sip. Stop. Your ground game, you got you. Watch the body shot. That was a solid one by Luna. You can see Hernandez kind of leaning to that side. Luna was eating Hernandez up on the feast. Look at the way that you could see on the face of Socrates. That hurt him. He's taking big shots. That hurt him. You saw him get frozen there for a second. All of these were adding up, and he finally works and gets the takedown. Changes the round. I don't know if it was enough with the judges to get it, but the takedown right here at least put him back in the fight, had him in positions where he could possibly end it. We gotta Didn't go. work for him, but what a fight. Ten minutes so far of unbelievable action. In between rounds, Big John McCarthy took off his headset and said, Luna's not even breathing hard, man. It's incredible the pace, three, the output. You and ready? the adversity Fight. that he's already had to endure. And what about Socrates Hernandez? The turnaround following the takedown in the second round. Unbelievable. You talk about, you know, he was in trouble throughout that round and just had the mental fortitude to work, get that takedown, got the back, but wasn't able to finish. And they continue unabated. Socrates Hernandez definitely should be looking towards that takedown. He had an advantage on the ground. Go back to your advantage. You're a tough guy. Don't stand with a guy that wants to stand in bed. Oh, he just got staggered again by this merciless offensive onslaught of Rogelio Luna. Doubling up. Total strikes landed two to one now in favor. Just eating him at the bottom. But here he goes. Hernandez. Here comes Hernandez. This is where he wants to be. That ground game he showed he had an advantage. Let's see if he can stick to his back. Luna needs to keep turning. Good job of, of course, himself back centered up. Perspiration now in the blood. Everything becomes a factor when trying to maintain a grip. And Luna creating distance, mid range, right cross. He continues to just batter the body. Socrates Hernandez, uh, Hernandez coming forward like an extra from the walking dead, and yet he continues to try to fight. It's, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this in MMA, John. Socrates Hernandez is just, he will not stop. He, is, he will not give in, but Luna is just lighting him up. There goes the mouthpiece again. Every time Luna hits him to the body, you know. It's stopping the breathing of Socrates. And Hernandez doing what is necessary to slow the pace, try to gain those ever important breaths, but Luna's back up to his feet. Luna needs to keep this on the feet. He obviously is in a position on the feet to win this fight, but if it gets to the ground, you know that Socrates has already shown he's the better man down there. It's incredible that Socrates Hernandez has his wits about all. just pounding his body. He and, is sledgehammering that. And yet Hernandez level change looking for another takedown. Whatever fumes are left in his tank, he wants to use them to take Luna down. And it stopped the pain job. Don't blame him. And he does it. It's the takedown. Incredible heart. Fortitude. Desire. Luna's breathing now. Yes, under two minutes left. Back to his feet. And he unloads the right hand. Hernandez backing up, struggling to take breaths against the fence. Left hook, right hand, another left hook to the head, another right uppercut. The referee looking on intently, knowing how many times Hernandez has come back in this fight already. 
Socrates Hernandez loses this fight. He will be the toughest 0-2 fighter in the world. This guy is unbelievable. And he's talking to his corner. Another body shot. Right up a cut left hook combination. Mike Tyson would be proud of Rogelio Luna's output, but how about Socrates Hernandez? Intelligence and the wherewithal to still go for a takedown, John. It's simply incredible. Buddy. He has been absolutely unbelievable, but he has taken big shots. And you can see Blake Rice, the referee, is starting to look at I'm not going to let you take many more. His hands are he's having a hard time getting his hands in place with the thing right now. Both of these warriors going out on their proverbial shields. 30 seconds left. Socrates Hernandez in just his second professional fight. Rogelio Luna making his professional debut. And it is mercifully over for Socrates Hernandez. But mamma mia, what a momentous professional debut for Rogelio Luna. And just like Hagler Hearns, it ends in the third round. Now, granted, it was scheduled for three rounds. You know what I'm doing here, brother. And this is worth it. Oh, my God. This was unbelievable. Socrates Hernandez just eating those body shots, trying to hold on, looking for the takedown at any chance he can get it. But Luna was just nonstop throwing shots, elbows, punches, knees. He was just a machine. Eventually, you saw that Socrates was having a hard time even seeing where the shots were coming from. Here comes the finish. Watch the shots. Elbow. You see him bring the hands up. He's taking big elbows there. Blake Rice, the referee, has seen enough. He brings an end to one of the most unbelievable three-round fights. Unbelievable. And speaking of unbelievable, talk about the DNA, the fighting DNA of Socrates Hernandez. I said it. This kid is the toughest 0-2 fighter in the sport of MMA. He has got no quit. He fights his, just fights to his heart. God, he's unbelievable. And he's just fought two guys that are just unbelievably tough. There's fights every weekend, John. Many, many, many events around the world, and yet let's not let's not take away from what we just witnessed here. This was a a special exhibition of violence. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes to an end at four minutes, 48 seconds into round number three. Referee Blake Bryce waves off the contest due to strikes. The winner by TKO, Rogelio Rogel. One of the most memorable professional debuts in MMA history. And full value to Socrates Hernandez for his fighting heart. So Luna and his fan base over the moon following that incredible fighting display. And speaking of featherweights, well, the main event's going to have to try to top that, and they have the potential to do so. Will it be reaffirmation or redemption? McKee versus Pitbull 2. The top dog is Patricio Pitbull, the champion, undefeated AJ McKee, who will be able to claim themselves the greatest featherweight. Oh my God! All those guys think they can beat me, but always they fall. Come, I'm ready for you. Don't take it personal, Pitbull, but I got Alicia in the kennel waiting for you. The mercenary claims another victim. Let's go! I take it! Can't take it seriously. McKay, AJ McKay has made history. The first one, it was just go in there, do your job, secure the belt. And now it's, I want to make sure he never wants to step in the cage with me again.
So coming up later tonight, main event of Bellator 277, A.J. McKee, newly mentioned featherweight champion. And he made that million dollar dream come true. But Patricio Pitbull, we talk about it. The one stat that buoys well for him is he's 5-0 in rematches. Let's go to the tail of the tape for this matchup between flyweights Edwin De Los Santos and Alberto Mendez. Well, we just had one that was an 0-1 in a pro debut. We got a 1-0 in a pro debut, and if this is half the fight, we are in for a treat. Here's Michael C. Williams. Bravo joining us tonight live on YouTube at Bellator MMA and Showtime Sports. We welcome you inside the Shark Tank SAP Center in San Jose. The prelims continue now as we go to the flyweight division set for three five-minute rounds introducing the blue corner at five foot five, weighing in 124.5 pounds. As a professional, he has won no contest. He fights out of Fairfield, California, Alberto Merida. Across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at five foot five, weighing in 124.8 pounds. As a professional, he's one and zero. Oh, he's fighting out of San Jose, California, Edwin De Los Santos. In charge, your referee Mike Beltran. Edwin De Los Santos. 1-0 with one knockout. Alberto Mendez. First well, round. No contest in his program. Hey, let's go. Walk that jab and come forward. Well, Los Santos made his Bellator debut hey, September of last year. Bellator 266 defeated John Adams via first round. TKO still feels he has uh, obviously a lot more to him to improve upon just getting his feet wet as a professional fighter but it's always good John like you say get that first one out of the way and he didn't have to uh, do it quite the way we saw Rogelio Luna just do it in his fight of the year candidate unbelievable I, I'm still in shock oh, I am too this fight Southpaw, De Los Santos, Mendez. That's a beautiful straight right hand down the pipe by Mendez. And he comes back with another right hand. Or he's setting the side cage. That kick by De Los Santos. Again, the flyweights. 125 pounds of fury and speed. And there's some quick hand speed on the combination from Mendez. Well, Los Santos just out of range for that right hand. Oh, heavy kick. That was a nice heavy. It was blocked, but it was still rattled the cage of Mendez. That was a nice high kick by De Los Santos. Los Santos fainting, looking to get Mendez to fight. Instead, Mendez goes to the body with a quick right hand. The first two minutes have indeed flown by here in this flyweight matchup to Los Santos. Oh! That's a big right hand landed by De Los Santos. But Mendez said, that's fine. Come on! That's because Dale Sanders tried to set him up for that high kick as he released him. Midway through the round. Body kick by De Los Santos. Mendez coming forward, hands down. Has to be careful. He's been rocked a couple of times by De Los Santos. Mendez needs to be very careful, not only of that right hand, but that kick. De Los Santos keeps on setting him up for that high kick. He needs to be wary that it's coming. Body kick by De Los Santos from the southpaw stance. Mendez trying to get on track. Under 
Two minutes left in the first. Every time you see De Los Santos turn into that southpaw, there goes right that, hand. that right hand, that lead hand then comes over the top and he likes to bring that left leg up high to the head. Meanwhile, Mendez coming in a straight line, he's to utilize the angles. Coming forward, fainting instead, eats the right hand again, the lead right, and there's the teeth and the inside cap kick by De Los Santos. So De Los Santos quick to pull the trigger and the more effective striker here in the first frame. Yeah, and one of the things you were talking about angles is Mendez was taking angles in the beginning, and you look at him, he's very linear right now. Look how he's coming straight forward, and that is why De Los Santos has taken over. And maybe part of the reason is he's tasted those kicks as well, and it's uh, taken some of the steam out of him. Final minute of the opening round. Right uppercut, and De Los Santos now feeling what Mendez has to offer. Final 30 seconds of the opening round. Good start for Edwin De Los Santos. Oh, that spinning back elbow. Almost kind of like what we saw Sergio Perez with Kyoji Uriguchi because it was on a, a strike that missed, and there it is on purpose this time. And the right hand, but he's got to be careful, John. Yeah, well, we, we've got a guy in Gaston Bolanos who has thrown that exact elbow. He'll be coming up later, but very effective shot if you can catch your opponent. Spinning back kick, so Edwin De Los Santos Stop. showcasing uh, many different looks in the opening five minutes. How do you have it on that unofficial scorecard of yours? Unofficially, I got Edwin De Los Santos up 10-9 right now. That was a nice clean round for him. I thought Mendez came out, was looking good, got hit with some shots. The round started to change over, and De Los Santos ended one. up with it. You're, what, you're loading up on the shot. So you, that... Coming up later tonight, it is Bellator 277 here at the Shark Tank, and a blockbuster event double. Main event championship doubleheader, AJ McKee against Patricio Pitbull, the sequel, Pitbull, looking to avenge the loss in the final of the Featherweight World Grand Prix. Meanwhile, Vadim Nemkov, Corey Anderson clash for a million dollars and the light heavyweight title. Aaron Pico hopes to keep his winning streak alive. And top 10 heavyweights also in action as number four, Linton Vassell faces number five, Tim Johnson. That's all coming up later tonight on Showtime. Right now, it's time for round number two between Edwin De Los Santos and Alberto Mendez. And there, the waist lock, the takedown. Much better start for Mendez here in round two. Lands a left hand, but Edwin De Los Santos breaks free. There's a lot of energy burned right there by Alberto Mendez trying to get those takedowns. One, two connects for De Los Santos. De Los Santos as Mendez was launching a right uppercut. De Los Santos has consistently been able to land that right hand, whether he's been in the orthodox or southpaw stance. I think that out of the southpaw stance, he's actually given Mendez more problems. Mendez does not like that stance. Looking a little... Leoto Machida like karate stance. Patricio Pitbull also has karate center stance at times. There's a lead right hand, changes levels, defended by Mendez. Struggle along the cage for a position. And a takedown by Mendez. He has side control. Scramble. 
See that underhook? That underhook's going to be what's going to get Edwin back to his feet. Now he decides to go into a guard. Had the ability if you just keep on scrambling, use that under and for the arm. And the Santos looking for the submission. Yeah. Escape by Mendez. Mendez delivers a body kick the as they get back to their feet. Under three minutes left here in the second round. Much better frame thus far for Alberto Mendez. Long range right hand from De Los Santos before he switches to Southpaw. Notice now, when he goes to that southpaw stance, Mendez starts backing up. Now that he's in the orthodox, watch Mendez. Starts coming forward. That southpaw stance is giving Mendez problems. And if you're Edwin, you want to go back, giving him something that he doesn't like, go back to that southpaw stance. Jab by Mendez. Walking down De Los Santos here in the second. De Los Santos on his back foot. Looking for a counter instead. Watch that right hand again. Goes back to Southpaw. And it continues to be the money punch for De Los Santos, that lead overhand right. Boy, he keeps on throwing it. Goes back to the well a lot. Look at, look at the eyes of Edwin De Santos, man. Wide open, looking all up, down, all over. He is into this fight right now. Meanwhile, Mendez continues to march forward in a straight line, pumps the jab, has had some success with striking, and now they open up. Getting a little more wild. That was a nice inside leg kick by Mendez. There's a level change, takedown attempt by De Los Santos, well defended by Mendez. But at least in doing it, it makes Mendez think that, oh, he will look towards taking me down instead of it being, hey, I don't even have to worry about it, I can just be comfortable with my stand-up. So that's a good thing for De Los Santos to do. Final 45 seconds of the second lead right again. The jab from the southpaw stance for De Los Santos. Catches the kick momentarily, backs De Los Santos up. Final 30 seconds of the second stance. Flyweight action. Edwin De Los Santos, 1-0 oh with a knockout. Going for the single leg. And Alberto Mendez in his Bellator MMA debut. Body, 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 let's go, boy! Again! Nice right hand again by De Los Santos. Close the round. Close round, okay? That was a close round. Deep breath. And which kick? Okay, then stay stay standard. I'll tell you, that last round was close. I can see the judges going either way. I, I do think that overall, Edwin De Los Santos is probably the guy leading the fight, but both well, guys. with the right hand, that's for sure. Both guys should look at it. I need this round. Mendez starting with a sense of urgency, as one would expect. But needs to up, ratchet up the offense. Moving forward. 
Calf kick by the Los Santos. Nice one, two down the middle from Orthodox stance into Los Santos. Keeps moving back and forth, switching stances, and there's a clubbing right hand right behind the ear of Mendez. Yeah, again, that right hand, that overhand right. Himself and another ball. one. Just finds the mark. So the emphasis is on Mendez to try to make an adjustment to avoid that as he just ate a sharp jab that split his guard. And there's a double jab from Mendez. Doesn't follow it up with the right hand. And again, Chopping right hand by De Los Santos. That right this is a recording. This is a recording. Dude. That right hand, no matter what angle he's throwing it from, it's finding his oh, hand. Nice up right uppercut, right hand by Mendez. There's the jab, so Mendez becoming a little more comfortable with his offense. But that jab, it can set the rhythm, it can break the rhythm. And De Los Santos just broke Mendez's rhythm with that stick. One thing I'd like to see out of De Los Santos, I'd love to see him instead of, he's throwing ones and twos, but never a three, four. He needs to just stay in that pocket when he's in there because if you're watching, most of the time, Mendez is ducking his head down, covering up, so he's not responding with that counter. Mendez becoming much more fluid in his striking here in the third and final round. Two minutes a left, overhand right by Mendez, so he's beginning to deliver with combinations, deliver with more regularity. And there, the timing by De Los Santos catches Mendez with that head kick. Yeah, that's the difference. You're, you are seeing Mendez land some shots here, but power-wise, it's always De Los Santos that's... He's the eye catcher. He's the one that's catching the big shots. There's a sharp jab by Mendez. Has done a good job of sticking it a little more here in the third round, midway through the final frame. Nice leap right with a swimming elbow by Mendez. Great of almost a lead uppercut. Yes, follow. Thank you for there. There's a right left combination by Mendez. Roberto Mendez, that was a really nice, clean combination he threw. And De Los Santos definitely, his offensive output has slowed. Two minutes left in the fight. But now De Los Santos picking his spot, coming forward again with his bread and butter, right hand. Superman punch there by De Los Santos. And the pace picking up here, John. Absolutely. Mendez throwing a lot of straight shots, but the power shots overall are coming from De Los Santos. He just has more snap on him. Snaps the jab. 90 seconds left in the fight. And Mendez just remains right in front of De Los Santos, taking those shots. That right hand cannot miss by De Los Santos. Coming up on the final minute of this flyweight fight, Mendez opening up. De Los Santos doing a good job and saying, yeah, you get the... Oh, oh, that one didn't miss. All those missed except for that one. So the respective professional MMA journeys are just beginning, and Edwin De Los Santos, Alberto Mendez with 30 seconds left. An honest night's effort, John, for both Mendez and De Los Santos. Great, look, both guys have really put it out here. Man. They've really thrown hard shots. They've gone after each other. Good technique by Paul. improved to 2 and 0. Will Alberto Mendez register his first victory as a pro? How do you see it, John? I have De Los Santos winning that fight, but it was a great fight by Mendez. Biggest reason you give it to De Los Santos overall? 
If you're looking at one thing, more power in the shots. Yeah. That right hand, that right is Mike. The big time. And those kicks. Oh, look at all those high kicks that did land. And that front kick at the end of the fight. Right to the face. Water. Take down attempt by De Los Santos, but then look, it comes right away. Boom. Straight up with the kick right to the side of the head. That's what you want to do when that you're not gonna get that takedown. Make that make him leave with something to remember with. But Mendez came out many times, just throwing clean, crisp, straight shots. Nice kick straight up the middle, splits the guard, gets the back here, tries to go for the suplex. Just not enough left in the tank to get it done. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Derek Cleary, Ron McCarthy, Rafael Davis, all have it exactly the same. 30 to 27 for the winner by unanimous decision. Edwin De Santos. Edwin De Los Santos pitches a shutout on the judges' scorecards and proves to 2-0. Alberto Mendez put up a great fight, but it was not his night. All right, let's go back to Amanda at the fight desk. Moro, what a night so far working through these prelims. Let's take a look at the main card we're going to get coming up tonight. Uh, if you've been with us, we've already talked about the two main fights, the title fights. But I want to talk about the second fight you're going to see there. Aaron Pico going up against Adley Edwards. Adley Edwards took this fight on less than two weeks notice. He has fought within the past two weeks. But Josh, he is going up against a guy in Aaron Pico who has won five in a row. The dude is on a roll. We're seeing something new from him every fight. What could we see tonight? Well, Edwards showing the confidence by taking the fight in less than five minutes, you should say. Basically. Once he got the call, yeah, yeah from Coker. Call, but then really comes down to Aaron Pico. The progressions that we've seen since him joining Jackson Week has continued to get better every single fight. The submission aspect, the wrestling aspect, and putting his boxing and his wrestling together has been dynamic. I love all the transitions we're seeing from him. I've seen him try to do a step over armbar, losing that position, falling right to an ankle lock. Those are the, the progressions that I've always dreamt of watching Aaron Pico learn. And now it's there, and he's absolutely looks amazing. I want to see what new things I can see out of him. Someone called and uh, asked you to fight Aaron Pico in less than two weeks' notice. Would you do it? Hell no. <laughs> exactly. Hell no. Moro, we'll send it back down to you. All right, Amanda, one of the most anticipated fights of our Bellator 277 prelims. Number nine ranked welterweight Kyle Crutchmer takes on the highly regarded debuting Michael Lombardo. Here's Michael C. Williams. For those joining us live in the UK on BBC iPlayer, we welcome you to San Jose, California, as we continue here at the prelims with three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing the blue corner first at six foot weighing in 170.3 pounds his professional record 12 wins two losses fighting out of Jupiter, Florida Michael Lombardo Make him work. And across the cage his adversary out of the red corner at five foot nine weighing in 170 and one half pounds as a professional eight victories just one loss he fights out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, Kaiho Crutchmer. And your referee in charge, Mike Price. Kyle Crutchmer, four and one in Bellator. Ready? Michael Lombardo actually won and know in Bellator, but returning to the Bellator MMA cage for the first time since November 2017. High kick attempted by Crutchmer to begin proceedings. 
Lamar is a very good fighter, good at every range. His wrestling is good, his stand-up is good, his ground game is good. Crutchberg known for his wrestling. His wrestling is outstanding, but his hands have gotten way better. And when he decides to take the fight to the ground, his ground and pound now is becoming nasty. Crutchberg representing AKA here in San Jose, Michael Lombardo. American top team out of Coconut Creek, Florida. Double jab by Lombardo, picked off by Crutchmer. Crutchmer swings wildly with the left. You can tell Crutchmer Crutch looks for the takedown. You can tell Crutchmer is looking for that opportunity to change levels and get into Lombardo. I hear that this is just the battle. This is right. This is the grind that most wrestlers will talk about. Just keep on putting pressure, switch things up, start chain wrestling your techniques together. One technique is not going to get Lamar to the ground. It's got to catch him behind. A beautiful quick sweep to get him there. Rushmer, two time All American at Oklahoma State. Coached by the legendary John Smith. Got your Daniel. Oh, they immediately Crutchmer going for the submission. He's going out to the neck, but right now he does not have it. But it's a good way to get himself around. Take the back of Lombardo. Lombardo's going to try to peek himself out. Good job by Mike Lombardo. Lombardo right hand upstairs by Crutchman. Just a little bit, little bit off on that distance. They pointed the opening round, moved over hand right by Crutchman. That didn't pose much of a problem to Lombardo, who moves forward with trying to establish the jab, followed up with the right. Tactical affair here in the opening round. Bardo's return to Bellator MMA, looking to knock off the number nine ranked Kyle Crutchman. Bardo's finding the home for that left hook. <laughs> Keeps on throwing it. Tiny enters. And again, Crutchman using the jab just to set up the level change and securing the takedown along the fence. This is important for Lombardo to put pressure down on that head, work himself back to his feet, but you can see. Take a look at the hands of Crutchmer. Those things are locked in. He's got a gable grip there. He's like, go ahead and stand up. I'm going to bring you right back to the ground. Now he's got the feet. Good job by Lombardo to get his feet out from the legs of Crutchmer. But again, as soon as he does it, Crutchmer goes back to taking the hands, clasping them around the legs, the hip area. This is this is a big thing with anybody from AKA. You know, they learned a lot of this from Josh Thompson started it. Khabib made it freaking unbelievably effective. Let them work their way up and then just take it down and break them. Take your down the nice job by Crutchmer. Keeps on working that position now that he gets to half guard. Beautiful job. Final minute of the opening round and the double wrist lock being employed by Lombardo from the bottom, but Crutchmer on top trying to defend this double wrist lock attempt by Lombardo. He's got that arm out though. That's, that's a problem for Crutchmer. He might end up, you see, if you see him rolling, you know the pressure on that thing is causing him problems. That's where Lombardo wants to bring that thing closer to the body. If he's going for the Kimura, that goes it. As the arm triangle choke submission win on his legend does Lombardo. Crutchmer had his back, and again, Lombardo going for the submission with time running out in the first round.
little more speed on the punches, man, and less power. A little more speed, just touch him. Just touch him, find your range, touch his gloves, and then start touching him to the body. Hey, uh, let's not go back. Yeah. Mike, when you changed your stance, you went backwards, and then you had to come forward. Keep him on that back foot the whole time. He's throwing all power. You know, you see it from a mile away. You said Jeff is basically He's picking up Papa. Papa. You know, Cam, but they, they, they go forward. They back him up. He can't fight on back. That's a close round, so we got to pick the pressure up in this one, all right? Pick the pressure up in this round, Mike. Two of the best camps in the sport being represented in this welterweight contest. Ready? Kyle Crutchmer out of Ready? AKA, Ready? Michael Lombardo out of American Top Team. Lombardo getting great advice from longtime MMA vet now. He's becoming a great coach, King Bo the Wall. Outstanding coach, great, great fight by. Trying to get Crutchmer to fight instead. Crutchmer standing his ground and delivering some power shots. Lombardo is trying to get Crutchmer on his back foot, just cannot do it. Doesn't have the power that Crutchmer is worried about. Crutchmer is just standing his ground. Nice clean jab by Crutchmer. Crutchmer able to counter Lombardo. Lombardo having difficulty trying to find the range, trying to get to a, a distance, John, where he can try to apply his craft. But he keeps on throwing ones, and that's a big problem. He keeps on just throwing one. While Crutchmer is waiting on that one and then throwing a lot of heat behind it. Lombardo's just not comfortable right now in the stand-up as far as feeling good about going forward on Crutchmer. I think he's just got to he's got to open up with more shots. Crutchmer wide with the right, looking to counter Lombardo. Two minutes gone in the second. Nice three punch combination because the first two really didn't touch, but the third one does, and that's what throwing combination will do. You can hear Coach Bob Cook telling Kyle Crutchmer, move forward. Both coaches want their guys to move forward. Crutchmer's the one that can make that happen right now. Lombardo's been trying, he can't do it. Overhand right from Crutchmer, Lombardo, not confident in throwing his jab. There's a calf kick by Lombardo. A lot of good movement by Mike Lombardo, good head movement. You see him moving himself in and out, side to side. But right now, there's a power difference where Lombardo throws. Crutchmer is just waiting for it. He'll even eat it to try to throw his own. One of Crutchmer's eight wins has come via knockout. That was against Brandon Wright in September of 2018. And Crutchmer on the hunt. Keep going. Keep pushing, Kyle. Right hand to the body by Lombardo. Single shots. Again, single shots is like what you're seeing. He needs to open those up into more combinations. Notice how, what Kyle's doing now. Notice the confidence of Kyle Crutchmore and what is happening in this fight. Now he's into the takedown. Nice job by Kyle Crutchmore. Starting to take over here. Pace and pressure is starting to work for him. Many onlookers thought that Crutchmore should have been given the decision. It was a lone defeat. 
against Cameron Lachinov at Bellator 249 back in October 2020. But he's off to a strong start in his professional MMA career and working from top position here after another successful takedown with 45 seconds left in the second job. Yeah, you hear you talking about that fight with Cameron and that whole thing came down to a three punch combination when Lashinov dropped his hands down and said hit me. Kretschmer did and they gave more credit for Lashinov being able to take it. So I think the Kyle Kretschmer should still be able to so it also. It was the rare night where the nail beat the hammer. <laughs> 20 seconds left here in the round and for Kyle Kretschmer. Big elbow. Elbow there looking to just neutralize Michael Lombardo who was trying to not accept his fate even though we are heading now to the third and final round still to come tonight Bellator 277 championship doubleheader a rematch between AJ McKee and Patricio Pitbull for the featherweight championship Vadim Nemkov and Corey Anderson will collide in the one million dollar final of the light heavyweight world Grand Prix Aaron Pico he welcomes Adley Edwards to Bellator MMA Pico is on a hot streak and Linton Vassell Tim Johnson both looking to move up in the heavyweight division rankings. And then tomorrow night, I'll be at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas with Showtime Championship Boxing Crew. And it all begins 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, a special Showtime Championship Boxing event. And then live on pay-per-view, the welterweight title unification fight between the undefeated Errol Spence Jr. and your Denny's Ugas. It is a banner weekend for combat sports coverage on Showtime. Ready? Round three. Round three, sir. Fight. Third and final round. Lombardo comes up more aggressively, as you would expect. And Crutchmer avoiding the attack, stepping out of range, going down low with the kick, and Lombardo trying to establish the jab unsuccessful. Well, at least he's moving forward now. Take a look, and he's throwing more combinations, not just yes. more, more combinations. Obviously, his coaches, Mo Law out there telling him, you need to move forward, you need to throw combinations. I need to see more out of you. Your output is not enough, and that's what he's trying to do right here. Rutschberg looking for another takedown been successful in that department throughout the fight. Lombardo with a wide base trying to stymie the attempt and empty the tank of Crutchmer, but Crutchmer, John, swallows up the legs. Look, Lombardo's a good wrestler, but he's not going to match up in the wrestling pedigree of a Kyle Crutchmer, and Crutchmer's wrestling has transferred over into MMA. He takes good shots. He uses the body locks now. He'll go to the legs. He'll go up and down. He's got it worked out with when he can go for the shots and what he wants to do in getting someone to the ground. Crutchmer told us coming into this fight that in each and every fight he gets more relaxed. And we, we've seen that effort here tonight. No wasted energy, no kind of dictating the terms of the fight. It's, you know, exactly. He has been in control of this fight throughout. Uh, you can take a look at the first round. Maybe he had some parts where he had some problems, especially with that, as you would say, a double wrist, like I would say, a Kamara. But catch one. <laughs> it's, I know. <laughs> but you could take a look. That was really where Lombardo kind of shined. Other than that, Kyle Crutcher has been the guy that's in control of this fight. And there's Crutcher with the single and looking again to take. Lombardo off his feet. Lombardo putting his weight now on Crutchmer with Crutchmer trying to just ride this fight out by controlling. He's got it. He's going to go for some, him up. He's going for some air miles like you are there, bro. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
I guess this tribute to, we have Frank Trink as a referee tonight. He remembers being taken for a ride from Matt Hughes. And yeah. uh, here we have uh, Crutchmer doing the same uh, to Lombardo and Crutchmer ever the showman knowing he needs to, uh, you know, entertain while doing his job here in front of the, the hometown faithful. Of course, he's from Tulsa, Oklahoma, but training here in San Jose at AKA with two minutes left in the fight. Lombardo needs to figure out something to do and figure it out pretty fast because Crutchmer has taken over and on the ground he's going to have a hard time. Crutchmer showed that he was able to pass guard on this. He needs to watch his arms not caught back in that double wrist lock situation but nice elevator hook. Yeah, elevator sweep <laughs> out there by yeah. Lombardo. Put him right. Crutchmer right now he needs to pass that leg. He was into half guard allows Lombardo to use that hook. Lombardo's doing a good job of, you know, at least being active from his back. He's not just settling and, and, and not taking a lot of damage. No, he's being that, controlled. And, and but that's that's exactly. the whole point. Yep. The whole point is he's not just settling in and saying, OK, I'm going to put you in guard and allow In fact, he's the one who keeps fishing for this. Yes. I'll give it to you. Kimura there attempt. There you go. There you go. He's got it again. The problem is he doesn't have his legs in a position to create enough where he's able to get that past. Nice job by Crushmer. You'll see Crushmer maybe even grab hold of his own shorts. He can do that. Coming up on the final 45 seconds of this fight, Kyle Crutchmer's wrestling pedigree helping to pay dividends here tonight. No doubt about it. It's been the difference in this fight. And Lombardo can wrestle. He just can't wrestle at the at the level that a Kyle Crutchmer can. Crutchmer neutralizing the right arm. Beautiful job. Looking for that. Passive. Still in the half guard, but he is content, John, to uh, yeah, ride it out here from top position. Looking to improve to five and one here in Bellator MMA and spoil the return of Michael Lombardo who who came in with a lot of momentum. A lot of people were looking forward to this fight and unfortunately for Michael Lombardo Kyle Crutchmer's wrestling was not much better. For the official decision, here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go now to your three judges at cage side. Your first judge, Elliot Kelly, scores the fight 29 28, while judges Michael Gingona and Michael Bell both see it the same 30 27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Kaiho. Crutchmer victorious via unanimous decision. He improves to nine and one overall, five and one 
in the Bellator MMA welterweight division. Let's get it back up to Amanda at the fight desk. Moro, thank you so much. What a night so far. We want to talk about the next fight we're going to see here in the prelims. We have a local fan favorite in Gaston Bolanos going up against Daniel Carey. And this is our first rematch of the night. The last time we saw these two, Carey got the better of him. Josh, what changes can you expect to see from each of these guys tonight? Well, Gaston, what he's done is he's went back to the drawing board, sort of trying to reinvent himself on the ground is what, is what he needs to work on. And he knew that going into that fight, but he thought because the confidence was coming in key, he thought he'd be able to stuff the takedowns and avoid the submission, which in reality was that's not what happened. So I think now he's, he's actually spent the time trying to work and improve on his grappling. And if he can stuff one or two takedowns to frustrate Kerry, I think he's got a good chance of getting that knockout. It has already been loud here tonight. We can expect the fans to be excited to see him. Morrow, we'll send it back down to you. Thank you very much, Amanda. And we do get set for more action here at the Bellator 277 prelims as we go to the tail of the tape for this matchup at featherweight between Gaston Bolaños and Daniel Carey. It's a rematch. Gaston Bolaños has an incredible stand-up game while Daniel Carey is a submission master. That 70.5 can be a big thing if Bolaños could keep it on his feet. All right, with the official introductions, here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight here at the Bellator 277 prelims, we'll go back to the featherweight division, set now for three five-minute rounds, introducing the blue corner. At five foot seven, weighing in 144.8 pounds, his professional record, seven wins, five losses, fighting out of Fort Smith, Arkansas, by way of Oakland, California, Daniel Scary Carey. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot seven, weighing in 144.4 pounds as a professional. He brings five victories, three defeats from Dublin, California, by way of Lima, Peru, introducing Gaston, dream killer. In charge, your referee Mike Beltran. So Bolaños looking to avenge uh, technical submission guillotine choke loss to Daniel Carey. Bellator 226 September 2019. Carey put him to sleep that night, Big John. Boy, he did. Bolaños is going to definitely be in the position he wants to keep this on the feet. He knows the carry is dangerous on the ground. He knows that he has the ability to put Carey to sleep with one of those lives that he has. And Carey known as Scary, while well, he was on the receiving end of a scary knockout loss against Aaron Pico in his last fight. Pico will face Adley Edwards as part of the main card coverage coming up on Showtime. For Bolaños, he is in the midst of his first two-fight losing streak, so plenty at stake here. A very important matchup for these two featherweights. For Gaston Bolaños, his ninth fight as a pro, all in the Bellator MMA cage, where he's 5-3, five and three, all five wins. Be a form of knockout for Daniel Carey. Well, they're both coming in off of two two losses. I mean, you talked about Aaron Pico's knockout of Daniel Carey. Then he had one against Rabatinov, if you recall. That was a big, scary knockout, too. So both guys said, this is a super important fight. I need to come back and show exactly why Bellator wants to use me again. I and kick just misses for Bolaños. Beautiful footwork by Bolaños. Notice that lateral movement. As Keith Carey, as Carey tries to close that distance, he makes it to where he has to change direction. That change of direction makes it to where he cannot get a hold of Bolaños. Not be happy with what they're 
seeing as far as you know, not a ton of action. If you're Bellanos, this is going exactly like you want it to. You're in control of the distance of the fight, that range. You're keeping him on the outside. You're seeing everything as far as if he's going to have those takedown attempts. And you just want to touch him. Just keep touching him, and eventually they'll start adding up. If you're Kerry, you're looking at this. It's a little bit out of your realm. You're trying to come at him with big shots, trying to close that distance quick. You're just never able to get close enough. Both of them delivering kicks and another calf kick there by Bolanos. Bolanos closing the distance. And that combination culminates with a kick under the armpit. And you can understand Daniel Carey, as you mentioned, back-to-back -back knockout losses. He, he's going to be a little tentative. He's going to want to make sure that he knows exactly the route that he wants to take. And against a guy like Bolaños, as I just mentioned, all five wins yeah. via knockout. So I mean, this, this could be a little gun shy in the early going. Although he has a win against Bolaños, which was a fantastic submission win, he knows that Bolaños is probably the most dangerous stand-up fighter he's ever fought. And so he's got to take his time. He's got to be careful. Big right hand lands for Bolaños in there. Carey moving forward to right, another low kick to the outside by Bolanos. A minute left in the opening round. Very much a tactical effort. Bolanos continues to target the lead leg of Carey. You can see it starting to mark up there. You see that red in the leg. It's starting to eat it on that lead leg, so. We'll see if Bolanos just keeps on going back. Gary rushing forward. Bolanos testing the waters again with that high kick. Goes downstairs. That kick checked by Gary. 30 seconds left in the first round. The kicking of Gaston Bolanos. The attack of Gary. And every time Gary enters that danger zone, as you like to call it, Bolanos is ready. There's a front kick to the face. That leg is really starting to give Kerry a problem. He's chopping away at it. Strong start for Gaston Bolaños. Kerry walked into the right hand. He's rattled. He's down. Bolaños looking to finish no, before no. the end of the round. Buzzer beating KO from Gaston Bolaños. He is six and three. All six wins via form of knockout and Achieved. That was definitely yeah, you got this is what I was talking about at the beginning when I said look he's got to take his time He's got this is the way he needs this to go. It was a beautiful job throughout the round Watch the kick come right up the middle and it catches Daniel Carey right on the jawline Watch where it hits him Bit right on that jawline. You see his eyes kind of go back a little bit. He's a little stunned He's trying to catch the view of Gaston, and then that beautiful right hand really starts to sink him. Gets hit with that shot. Bolanos just going after him. You can see him go out. He folds back. Watch this shot right there. That one right there, out. And Gaston Bolanos, corner, CSA Combat Sports Academy, Kieran Fitzgibbons and company celebrating the fact Bolanos first two fight losing streak is history. He avenges the loss to Daniel Carey, the dream killer, leaving living the dream here tonight. That's a big win for him, man. You gotta be very and happy for you him. You think? Look at the reaction here, John. Overcome right. with emotion and it. He could not have fought a more perfect fight for him. That was just a beautiful exhibition of a stand-up fighter using footwork to keep himself where he wanted to be. And he prays from Big John McCarthy. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage referee Mike Beltran steps in, waves off the contest due to strikes. Official time, four minutes, 59 seconds in round number one. The winner by TKO. Song, Green Killer, he may have just put his hat on, but hats off to Gaston Bolaños for an impressive victory, snapping a two-fight losing streak and 
sending Daniel Carey to his third straight knockout loss. And coming up later tonight as part of our championship doubleheader for Bellator 277, it is the $1 million final of the light heavyweight World Grand Prix. The gauntlet for glory begins here in the first of our light heavyweight World Grand Prix quarterfinal contest. Jab lands again. This time he drops Davis. Nepka pouncing on Phil Davis. And still, Bellator light heavyweight world champion, Vadim Malenko. Anderson is riding Yakshamuradov, dropping those nasty elbows. Yakshamuradov being worn by the referee. And Corey Anderson advances to the semifinals. Round and pound. Semifinals are underway. Anderson is staring into the eyes of the most dominant fighter in the division. The finals are set. It will be Vadim Nemkov defending his title against Corey Anderson. Nemkov seeking his 10th straight win. Anderson looking to run his Bellator MMA record to 4 and 0 oh with the victory and the one million dollar bonus check. We continue with Bellator 277 preliminary action. Next up, bantamweight bout between Bobby Cerrone the third and Caleb Ramirez. Let's go to the numbers. Look at the numbers. Bobby Cerrone, 23 years of age. There's a 10 year age difference at 33 for Caleb Ramirez. Cerrone is the guy that we had watched earlier against Socrates Hernandez in that first fight. Amazing fight. This should be great. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight here at Bellator 277 in San Jose, the prelims go now to the Bantamweight division. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds, introducing the blue corner at five foot eight, weighing in 135.7 pounds. His professional record one and one. He fights out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, by way of Woodland, California. Caleb, the Thunder One, Ramirez. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot seven, weighing in 135.8 pounds as a professional. He's one and zero oh from Vallejo, California. Bobby, Humble Warrior, Cerrone. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Bobby Cerrone, the third, with tons of support here tonight. Caleb Ramirez making his Bellator MMA debut. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the bantamweight division. victorious over Socrates Hernandez in his debut Socrates Hernandez Rogelio Luna engaging in a definite fight of the year candidate earlier tonight on the prelims and uh, what do you make of Caleb Ramirez uh, follicles his hairstyle interesting I think he's on fire dude it looks awesome that's the news that's like uh, when I was in pro wrestling Bianca Belair with her hair whip a minute gone here in the opening round. Can't use that though here. 
it was a, it was a nice side kick by Serronio, but the kick by Ramirez landed a little bit south of the border. Yeah, looking to scramble those Easter eggs on this Good Friday. As Ramirez and Serronio knew their hostilities very much, feeling a process here in the first round, looking to get a gauge on what the other may present. Serronio at times is looking like Stephen Wonderboy Thompson with that karate style. He switches back and forth. There are more standard kickboxing stance, and then he'll go right to that bladed stance. Very effective from him. Serronio proved in that fight with Socrates Hernandez that conditioning should not be an issue. Plenty of energy and able to continue to pour on the pressure. Had the takedowns work against Hernandez and takedown here against Ramirez with two minutes gone in the first frame. And he's got very good timing on those takedowns because he gets his opponent so concerned and so used to him being in this stand-up battle that they don't even think about the takedowns. He transitions, shoots right in, gets the takedown. Beautiful job. Wrestled for Sac City College for two years. A humble warrior looking to humble Caleb Ramirez in Ramirez Bellator debut. And there's a high amplitude suplex. That was a beautiful knee landed by Serrano. Ramirez did not think that was going to be able to touch him. That landed flush. Dragging Ramirez to the mat. Looking for the neck. Ramirez coming off a guillotine choke loss and now being threatened by Serronio with a potential rear naked choke, but Ramirez defending it. Serronio looking to go to mount and decides, no, I'm not going to. Really in control right here. Has a lot of time to work over a minute and a half. Serronio looking to send this partisan crowd into rapture. They gave him a superstar welcome when he was introduced here, and he's uh, taking it to Caleb Ramirez. Just Serronio's second professional fight. Both the fights taking place inside the Bellator MMA cage and now goes to Mount. Ramirez looking to explode, looking to reverse position. Final minute in the opening round. Serrano has a very strong base. Good balance, understands exactly where he needs to position his hips. Okay, send him with that side kick and follow up. Take him up, set those steps up, okay? This was the knee that came up high. You see Ramirez looking back and he goes, oops, I didn't think that was gonna reach up and touch me. They hit him clean and then it went right into the suplex, picks him up, brings him over. Nicely done. Ramirez goes with it, which was a smart idea by him that made it so he didn't eat. The ground hard, the ground and pound by Serronio. Very nice job. Heavy shots. A really nice round for Bobby Serronio. Well, round 
two. Saronio doing a good job of managing distance, and he said that would be his greatest strength, and he immediately closes it. And that first kick coming out. Yeah, that takes take down. Down. That's impressive when you're seeing someone of his age able to transfer all of this and transition from one element to the next. 23 years old. Caleb Ramirez is 33. Shoulder strike from side control by Saronio back into well, looking to pass and looking to go to full mount now in the half guard of Ramirez. Right, some good elbow strikes, hammer fist when he wants. A lot of pressure here. Job by Ramirez to get it back to a full guard at least. Romeo looking to posture up and get that necessary distance to really rain down the fury on Ramirez. Ramirez controlling the posture but unable to control Soronio's movement. Right now, Ramirez being nothing but defensive in this position. You see him with his arms, what he's doing with the gable grip, holding on, trying to keep the posture of Serenio down low so he doesn't need a big strike. Back to their feet. Oh, and that knee was definitely south of the Aguinto. Much to the chagrin of Saronio supporters. This is just as they're getting up off of the ground. Take your time. You got a little time here? Yeah, there is no way that that was not going to hit. It's lined up straight for him. It wasn't set up to throw it in any other fashion. I don't think Ramirez did it on purpose, but it does give him a break here? in this fight right now. Okay, maybe time. he can change the momentum. See how you feel? The Serenio has been starting to really dominate. Good there. Okay, so you two are in a clinch with that, right? Do you want to be in that same position or do you want space? Space? Nice job by referee Jason Herzog. You notice that he offered Serenio the ability to be back in that clinch yes. position that was because he was fouled. Yeah, I understand. Action resumes. By Saronio doing a really good job off that karate stance, John. No, he does. He covers distance very well. He's fast. Oh, oh, a big shot. He's got it going down. Saronio wipes out Bobby Saronio. 2 0 with a monster KO. And that's how you close the show. You want to talk about delayed reaction knockout. When they re-show this, I want you to see exactly what happens to Ramirez. Big shot. Big shot by Serrano here. Straight right hand, right on the button. He is out. Now he's able to catch himself. He still has no idea where he's at. Watch the right hand, right on the mark. And then you see that he just collapses. His brain shuts off. Seronio never has to touch him again. Watch how fast this happens. Watch the reaction. Right hand now. Bobby 
Saronio the third is trained by his father, Bobby Saronio Jr. And it is a family affair as the 23 year old Bobby Saronio just electrified this partisan crowd at the Shark Tank. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end. Two minutes, 14 seconds into round number two. The winner by knockout, Bobby Hawaii. Serrano. No need to sit down and be humble, Bobby Serrano. A nice show of respect. Good to see Caleb Ramirez back on his feet. Bobby Saronio the third is flying high after he puts Caleb Ramirez in airplane mode. Let's go to Amanda Guerra at the fight desk. Moro, it has been an absolutely incredible night, and we are not even to the main card yet. Can you believe it? I do want to talk about the first fight we are going to see on the main card. This is a battle of outstanding heavyweights. We have Tim Johnson going up against Litton Vassell, and they are right next to one another, Josh, when it comes to those heavyweight rankings. I mean, you see there, right there, four and five. Litton Vassell says, look, if I win this, he thinks he deserves a shot at the title. But talk to us about this match, Josh, and just how even these guys are. Yeah, Lynn Vassell needs to make sure he doesn't get ahead of himself, but I do agree with him. If he has a great performance tonight, if he's able to get a finish, a knockout, a submission, any of those things, I could see him leapfrogging others to get to that title shot. Talk to us about the tactics of each of these two guys, because they're so evenly matched. I mean, neither one necessarily has an advantage, so what are the specific tactics where they do each have an advantage? So, with Tim Johnson, he's probably the better boxer on the feet, a little bit cleaner striking. He's probably got a little bit better wrestling, but Lynn Vassell on the bottom and on the top with the jiu-jitsu department is outstanding. So does that work? Tim, jo Tim, Tim Johnson wants to take it? Probably not. So you may see this fight end up being on the feet, but Lynn Vassell has good wrestling as well. Can he take Tim down and be in the top position? I look at it in two different ways. If Tim Johnson can sprawl and brawl, keep this on the feet, utilize his boxing, he probably has the advantage in that area. Or Lynn Vassell, he's got to get this fight to the ground, get on top, and he does great work. Vicious ground and pound, an amazing submission. This is a great way to start the main card, and then we get Aaron Pico, Adley Edwards after that. No better way to start it than with heavyweights. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Moro, we'll send it back down to you. Oh, yeah. It's keep on coming here. What a memorable preliminary portion of Bellator 277 it's been. And, hey, this is an intriguing matchup at light heavyweight. Dobozhan Yakshamuradov against former Bellator middleweight champion Rafael Carvalho now campaigning at 205. John, as we go to the numbers. And Carvalho, long, six foot three. Look at the reach difference, 72 to 78. That's an advantage. But Yakshamuradov's fast, and he likes a lot of spinning attacks. Here's Michael C. Williams. For all those joining us in the UK on BBCI Player, staying it up with us late night. We thank you. Out on the West Coast, USA, we go now to the light heavyweight division. Set for three five-minute rounds. Introducing the blue corner. At six foot three, weighing in 206 pounds even. His professional record, 16 wins, six losses from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Introducing Rafael the Blessed Carvalho. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner. At five foot 11, weighing in 205.4 pounds as a professional. 18 victories, seven defeats, one draw. Fighting out of Turkmenistan, presenting Dovlijan Yakshamuridov. In charge, your referee, Frank Trigg. Thank you. Thank you. Ready? Ready? Fight! The bell in round one, both. Yakshamuradov and Carvalho looking to snap losing streaks. Carvalho's got the more traditional kickboxing style. Yakshamuradov likes to come with a lot of flashy 
attacks. He's got a beautiful spinning wheel kick. He'll throw the spinning back fist a lot. He is very quick when he's, once he decides to move. The action dog was part of the light heavyweight World Grand Prix. Was eliminated by Corey Anderson. Anderson will challenge Vadim Nemkov for the title and vibe for that $1 million bonus check as part of our championship double header. Coming up on Showtime. Bellator 277 from the Shark Tank here in San Jose. And what a memorable night it has already been. Incredible action from fighters who are really just beginning their journeys as professional mixed martial artists. I'll tell you what, but some of them, if they continue to fight like that, they're not gonna have a long career. <laughs> it's just like the abuse. And it's the Akshamurudov looking to abuse the lead leg of Carvalho. but it was not set up well by Yankshmerd off at all, and that's why it did not work. Front kick by Yankshmerdov. Two minutes gone here in the opening round. Both of them testing the waters. Again, Carvalho now campaigning at light heavyweight after being a champion at 185 pounds, John. Yeah, 185, man, the, you know, his size was just so impressive and very hard to deal with. But everyone that has, you know, been fighting him lately for the most part, the big thing is try to take him off of his feet. Make him hit the ground, he hits the ground. Not the same fighter. Yakshimurdov trying to make him hit the ground with his punches. <laughs> Midway through the opening round. Yeah, Murdoch has a good ground game, but he, he likes to fight in the stand-up. He did go for that one takedown just to try to make Carvalho think about the takedowns and stuff. Carvalho, the southpaw stance just misses the right uppercut from Yag Shamuradov, was able to slip off the center line, oh, and a pull like right, and another follow-up right hand by Yag Shamuradov, but again, the takedown defense of Carvalho on display. But Yag Shamuradov with dogged determination. Nice job by Carvalho to keep himself in the standing position. Fought that off very well. Everybody that has been fighting has been working towards getting him to the ground, and so that's something he has got to make a difficult task. And speaking of a difficult task, Carvalho looking to end this career high three fight losing streak. So, really, a pivotal matchup here. And for Yag Shamurdov as well, came in, made his debut in the World Grand Prix, but has suffered back to back defeats and now tries to. Build some momentum at the expense of the Bellator MMA veteran and has had success here in the opening round as he was looking for the coup de grace. You gotta fear, yeah, Carvalho lost his very first fight, then went on a 15 fight in yes. streak. So the guy can definitely fight, he, he's got a lot of skill. It's just that confidence, the confidence started to wane once Gegard Mousasi took that title from him. The confidence kind of went down. Things didn't work for him the same. Wasn't the same fighter. Great left hand by the southpaw through the guard. Flicks the jab. And there's Yakshimura timing that perfectly to secure the takedown, but having to work to keep Carvalho down. Carvalho working to get himself back to position, get back to his feet. I really like what I'm seeing out of Carvalho. He's not settling. Before he would settle, that takedown, he would settle and say, it's okay, I'll, I'll stay down here. And he would end up getting beat because of it. He's working hard to get himself back to his feet. Great job. Нужно побольше активности. 
не сдаст, попадает же по голове. Все нормально. Только начали. Напугай. Isso aí. Ficar ligado só nessa mão de trás dele, se mata a cobra que ele tá jogando, entendeu? Principalmente quando você empurrala, fica naquela, vai, não vai, vai, não vai. Ele tá querendo te contra-golpear com o mata cobra entendeu? Quero mais chip, hein, Rafael? Vamos jogar, vamos jogar uma furar, furar, mas ele mais embaixo, entendeu? Jogar no corpo, que ele já tá começando a cansar, certo? E, ó... Carvalho lost his light heavyweight debut against the reigning light heavyweight champion Vadim Nemkov. And Nemkov. Perfect 7 0 in Bellator hopes to extend his personal win streak to 10 when he defends the title against Corey Anderson in the highly anticipated final of the light heavyweight world Grand Prix. Part of our title twin bill here tonight at the Shark Tank as Yakshamuradov looking to showcase his uh, educated feet. Oh, nice counter right hand by Yakshamuradov. Kavayo doing the same thing, going after the body with the kicks. That's how he won his title. Put Brandon Halsey down with a kick to the body. That won him the title. So as you mentioned, John, not using a jab, not doing anything to set up the takedown attempt, and, and thus far, uh, Carvalho, good job of defending it here. And that's why Carvalho's able to defend it. He just can't get deep enough in on it, and he doesn't have that Greco-Roman style of being able to overpower him with that upper body control. Nice combination on the exit by Yagshimuradov, that score. Exactly, but for the most part, Carvalho, you know, his output has increased, which is really good to see, but it seems like Yagshamurdov has, has tailed off. Yeah, he's looking for the proverbial home run with that right uppercut. Uh, it bothering Carvalho. There, Carvalho is a beautiful combination. And Lance Gordon again on the inside. Yagshamurdov feeding him the right uppercut. And Yagshamurdov again, this time secures. The takedown. Kavayo cannot settle here. He needs to work himself back to his feet. He starts to settle. You see him now going into guard. This is not where he needs to be. This is not his strong suit of being on the ground. He's not real dangerous off of his back. Yank Shemurdov's just going to use ground and pound to try to keep him there. Big elbow. I like the fact that you're at least seeing Carvalho open that guard. And Yakshimurdov opens up with the right hand, but not delivering a lot of ground and pound offense here is Carvalho. Comfortable from his back, but as we say time and time again, John, you don't want to accept this position. Uh, if you end up accepting it, and let, it's okay if you have a dynamic submission game and you're able to catch guys, but if you don't, that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna end up in one shot. It's gonna change everything. Final minute of the second round, some ground and pound from Yagshamuradov. And the fight is being waved off. 
Rafael Carvalho hurt, and Novozhan Yagshamurdov snaps his two-fight losing streak and picks up his first win here in Bellator MMA. The native of Turkmenistan. Massive elbow doing the damage to Rafael Carvalho, who has now suffered four consecutive losses. But uh, Dovoljan Yakshimurdov, John, picks up his first win here in Bellator MMA, gets off the schnack. That is a very important fight for Yakshimurdov. Watch this elbow. That elbow, and this is what I was talking about. Watch what happens when the elbows start to hit. He lands one big one right here. That changes everything. Look at the reaction of Carvalho. Everything now is all about just covering up. He's hurt. It only takes one shot. That's why if you're not that dynamic guy off of your back, you cannot stay there. You've got to work and make it to where your opponent doesn't have the opportunity to open up with elbows like that. And Dovoljan Yakshimurodov joins current Bellator MMA middleweight champion Gegard Mousasi as the only men to stop Carvalho with strikes. So a huge win for Dovoljan Yagshimuradov. Big win. Big, uh, and, a, and a beautiful. Big presence. <laughs> Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end. Referee Frank Trigg waves it off. Four minutes, four seconds. Round number two, the winner by TKO, Dovoljan Yakshimurodov. Dovoljan Yakshimurodov now 19-7-1, and, and his first win in Bellator MMA. Let's go to Amanda Guerra at the fight desk. Thank you so much, and what an incredible night it's been. We are just about an hour away from the beginning of our main card, which you can check out on Showtime. Taking a look at the featherweight rankings, the rematch with A.J. McKee, now with the belt around his waist, going up against the now number one contender in Patricio Pitbull, a rematch of the biggest fight in Bellator history, which we got to see just eight months ago. Let's talk about these two guys going into this fight tonight uh, because it's different. Now going into this one than it was eight months ago. AJ McKee is the champion. He's calling this fight. He's like, I'm going to win it in the second round. You don't love that so much, Josh. I don't love that for any fighter, not just AJ McKee, but the younger fighters that especially don't like that. You want to know why? Because I, I understand the confidence and the, I don't want to say arrogance of it all, but he's just got to be cautious and careful. Patricio's not like a young talent. He's a grizzled veteran. He understands how this sport's going to go. He understands the ups and the downs. And A.J. McKee has all the ability. We know the speed, the reach, the range, the wrestling. He started off wrestling at a young age. The submission aspect that we saw against Darian Caldwell. Look, he is one of the most well-rounded fighters in the world. I don't like I don't like when you come in this confidence because if it doesn't go your way right off the bat, how does it change? That's what I want to know. And Pipple is so good in rematches. He's had five of them. He is undefeated in all of them. And you and Big John talked about it. His coach, his trainer talked about it. They've never seen Pitbull look so good coming into a fight. Yeah, there's not much that Pitbull can take away from the first fight that you just saw, okay? Because it was so short. There was a couple, there was the very first exchange between the two of them when the, he got dropped with the head kick. And when Patricio tried to get back up, he got, AJ got back on the neck quickly. So it just, there wasn't much to take away from that. Patricio went back to the well and just said, hey, look, I'm gonna just go back to what I know how to do best, stick and move, okay? Get on the inside and let my hands go. So if he didn't learn a whole lot from that first fight, how does he get the victory tonight then? Well, we saw him this week, and how did he look this week? He, he looked, looked good. He looked good. He looked trim. He looked like he was ready to fight. He didn't. He's never been much for words, but he is someone who was very confident, always been confident. But he understands that, look, I need to do something different this time around than I've ever done before. He's got to make AJ uncomfortable. He's got to push him around. He's got to take the center of the cage, which he did not do in the first fight. And what he's got to do is let those hands fly when he gets into a phone booth. The couple of words we did hear from Pitbull, I have no belts. And he does not like that. That is unacceptable for him. Moral, let's send it back down to you. 
All right, thank you very much, Amanda. The Bellator 277 prelims roll on. Number seven ranked heavyweight Tyrell Fortune will oppose Rakim Cleveland. Let's go to the tail of the tape. Tyrell Fortune coming in at 258. I believe that is the heaviest that he has ever weighed as a heavyweight here. 238 for Rakim Cleveland. He's actually getting smaller. Here's Michael C. Williams. And now here tonight at Bellator 277, the prelims feature a heavyweight matchup scheduled for three five-minute rounds as we introduce the blue corner at six foot three, weighing in 238.6 pounds. The veteran holds a professional record with 22 wins, 14 losses, one draw from Dayton, Texas, Rakim the Boogeyman. And across the cage is adversary fighting out of the red corner at six foot two weighing in 258 pounds as a professional he brings 11 victories just two defeats by way of portland oregon he fights out of tempe arizona tyrell fortune and the referee in charge jason herzog Tyrell Fortune, eight stoppage wins in Bellator heavyweight competition, the most in divisional history. Cleveland, he wants to, well, both of them looking to bounce back off losses. In fact, Fortune losing to Linton Vassell. We will see Vassell take on Tim Johnson in our heavyweight opener to begin the main card of Bellator 277. That's coming up. Uh, later tonight, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Tyrell Fortune actually being a 2014 World University Championship gold medalist. This guy can wrestle. He is good. In his last fight against Lynn Vassell, Lynn Vassell, he outdid him on the ground. He got the sweeps. He got the positions. He was able to keep Tyrell Fortune on the ground at times. Tyrell said that's never going to happen again. Fortune in his 15th Bellator MMA heavyweight bout. That's the second most appearances behind Czech Congo with 17. Congo will run it back with Ryan Bader for the heavyweight title. Coming up in the month of May is we go back to Paris, France on May 6th. Well, some of us, some of you will, John. So, Rakim Cleveland talking. I talked to him earlier. He says, man, you're going to see a lot of different performance out of me because I am going to be all over him tonight. He's talking right now. He's trying to get Tyrell to get a little angry. Tyrell needs to be smart. He's a much better wrestler than Rakim on the feet. Oh, what a right hand by Fortune rocking Rakim Cleveland. Fortune unloading oh, on Rakim Cleveland and Fortune favors Tyrell Fortune. What an onslaught. And that's how you bounce back from a loss. Tyrell Fortune feeding Rakim Cleveland a steady diet of shots. This is what I was talking about. He doesn't really want to be in the stand-up for too long. Use that wrestling. Nope. I was so wrong. Use that stand-up. Hurt Rakim in the stand-up. And then put him away. Jason Herzog stopping that fight. Big power by Tyrell Fortune. Fortune's ninth stoppage win in Bellator heavyweight competition, the most in divisional history. And now his eighth knockout victory in Bellator heavyweight action, the most in divisional history. So Fortune looking to improve his fortunes, wanting to move on up. Performances like this will help John. In that right hand, it wasn't even thrown perfect, but it's, he's got so much power and so much strength. It hurt Rakim, and then he swarmed him. Kind of, at times, crushed his face a little bit. Nice knee inside. Kind of backed off right there. Brings the uppercuts. You can see Rakim in real trouble. Referee Jason Herzog stops it, but Rakim got the takedown. The only takedown of the fight. Tyrell Fortune moving to 12 and a two with one no contest. All of his fights coming inside the Bellator MMA cage. Ah!
Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, due to unanswered strikes, the fight is waved off officially. One minute, 38 seconds. Round number one, the winner by TKO, Tyrell Fortune. Let's go to Big John McCarthy. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Tyrell Fortune. Tyrell, you had a big fight that didn't go your way in your last one. You were upset with your performance. Talk to me about what you were thinking about coming in here in this one. Throwing the hands and getting the win. I just want to get the W no matter what. I was just start, starting to talk about you being such a good wrestler. You needed to use your wrestling against someone like Rakim, and you landed that right hand. You heard him, and you went right after him. He was telling me to shoot, and... Since he said that, I was like, fuck it, I'm not shooting. We throwing hands, period. That's what he was talking to you about. I saw him talking. I thought he was telling you to come on the stand up here. He was waiting for a shot. He wanted me to shoot, and I was like, okay, now nah, I'm not shooting. Well, you're back on the win track. You're in that position where you're just a fight or two away from getting possibly that title fight. Who is it you should face next? Whoever Bellator asked me to fight. Sounds good to me. Congratulations on a big win. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Tyrell Fortune. Tyrell Fortune against a guy named Rakim. Well, it's Fortune who ends up paid in full, proving he ain't no joke. Let's go to Amanda Garrett at the fight desk. Maura, thank you so much. I am here with two-time world champ Josh Thompson. Uh, Josh, let's talk about our co-main event tonight, but it is the first of two fight title fights we get. It is the end of the road for the... Uh, light heavyweight world grand prix and we've talked about it these are the two best guys in the world going at it we have the dean nimkov going up against corey anderson let's start with nimkov though because he is so fast the current champ yeah corey anderson talked to about it this week saying that the one thing i'm gonna have to deal with is his speed he puts his combinations together really well what he does very well is he hides his kicks behind his striking and that's the biggest thing when he fought phil davis right he kept phil davis on his heels the whole time he kept phil guessing of what he needed to do in terms of the wrestling as well as trying to keep it on the feet. Nemkov is someone who just, maybe he doesn't look super fast, but everyone we have talked to said, look, the way he hides his kicks and his combinations, mixed with his feints and his power, it's something to be feared. And every fighter he's fought so far, he's made pretty good work of. Let's talk about Corey Anderson. I think he's been so honest this week and the weeks leading up to it. This is the moment he's been waiting for his entire life, a shot at that title. He's like, look, it's about the money. A million dollars is on the line tonight. That's a big deal. But he really wants that belt. He says, I'm proud of myself that I've stuck to my plan. How does he walk away with that belt tonight? He's got to fight composed. He's got to make sure that he hasn't let the moment get the better of him. He has to understand that, look, this is his lifelong dream is to be in here in the finals. When he fought Yasha Meridoff, he was very patient in that fight, okay? He stood for most of the first round. He threatened a couple takedowns here and there. But as you see, as the fight went on, he is known for overtime for a reason. Overtime is because he pushes you to the point where he's taking you into those deep waters and making you fight at a pace that you're not comfortable with. With Ryan Bader, he was able to land some good shots, the clean shots, and the one thing that he always does very well, he's proud of, is his ground and pound. When he gets on top, he is nasty, vicious with the elbows, as Yash Smirnoff found out, and as well as Ryan Bader found out. We'll see if he can hush the crowd tonight. That is coming up again, starting at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern on Showtime. For now, Morrow, back down to you. All right, Amanda, one of the most memorable Bellator prelim cards coming to a close here with action in the welterweight division. As we go to the tail of the tape for Tyson, Sipavong, Miller, and Helen Gracie. Take a look at this fight right here. Look, Tyson, Miller, super strong. Great ground game by Gracie. Who's the one that's going to win this, the stand-up guy or the ground guy? Here's Michael C. Williams. From the SAP Center tonight, the time has come to conclude the prelims here at Bellator 277. We'll do it now with three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing the blue corner at six foot two, weighing in 170 pounds, even his professional record 0 and 3. He fights out of San Francisco by way of a Honolulu Hawaii preserved in the Hello. And 
across the cage is adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot nine weighing in 170.4 pounds as a professional he's undefeated two wins no losses from arcada california tyson in charge your referee frank trigg Good. Gracie, the cousin of Neiman and Hoist Gracie, son of Helson. Tyson Sipa Von Miller returning to Bellator with another win under his belt. Won his professional debut here in Bellator against Albert Gonzalez in September 2019. Was last in action in May of last year for Helen Gracie. He is trying to earn his first professional win, John. He is 0-3, uh, including a loss to Shane Keefe in his last fight here in Bellator last September. Yeah, he was coming on in that fight, but not fast enough. He took a lot of damage in the beginning. Coming on at the end, just couldn't make up the distance. Lead right hand there by Miller to Lance. And that's what he's going to have to be careful with, even though Alan Gracie's longer, got a bigger reach. Miller has got power in his hands, and he likes to stand up, and he's going to just be hunting Gracie, knowing Gracie wants to get the fight to the ground, but I'm just waiting for it. Good inside, low kick by Miller. Another kick to the lead leg by Miller, lead right hand. There's the shot by Gracie, and Miller defending with some hammer fists and staying on his feet. Gracie could get his hands together here. He had the single, he switched down to a high crotch. Pull that leg out, he's got the takedown. Gracie worked diligently for it. Can he keep Miller down is the question. That is a big question. And Miller, Miller feeding question. him with a couple of right hands. And it's Miller that ends up in top position. Now Gracie basically decided, oh, okay, I gotta keep this position. Let me drag him back to the ground here. Right now, Miller is super strong, has a lot of gas in his tank. Alan Gracie being very tenacious and trying to stay with this takedown. Gracie, great find. Looking a great find to Lagan. Miller content to just stay along the fence and needs to try to create some separation, turn into Gracie break away but Gracie holding on and trying to secure the takedown plenty of time left in the opening round and instead it again butterfly hook but it's it's Miller on top position John but it was Alan Gracie was the one that decided he put, exactly. he's, he's pulled him into his guard instead of losing that position losing that clinch that he had he felt better going to his back he's more dangerous than Miller is from his back so he's got an ability to use that submission skills now. He'll have a very good wide base. You see Howland bring his arm inside. He's looking for that sweep. Miller's having nothing to do with it. Posturing up is Miller, dropping a series of left hands to the face of Gracie. Now ground and pound by he created that separation he needed. Hammer fist and a steady diet of right hands. Referee looking on. He's got to roll. He's got to turn towards him. Just roll through. Bury your head. Start to roll through. And come out on top. See that he's got it. That's the problem. I saw Miller holding the cage. That's keeping him up. Under a minute left in the opening round. It's so hard when you're when you're Helen Grace right now. He's got to get that foot past that mat. And here in the early, you know, the first round where Sweat and 
is not a, a major issue, but Miller back to his feet again, attacking Gracie while Gracie holding on to that single. Right now, you're just looking at the difference between striker and grappler. And the striker's winning. Absolutely. He's landing big shots. Gracie in a position where he's absorbing all of this punishment, looking for that ability to get a submission. But it's wearing on him, you can see. Spending a lot of energy trying to secure the takedown and ground control. Meanwhile, it's Tyson Sipavon Miller in control as we head to the second round. There's an exclamation point on the first. Alan Gracie struggling to get back up to his feet, breathing heavily. He's lumped up, he's tired, he's taking a lot of shots. That's help. Master Health Gracie, his head coach. Take a look at some of these shots, you'll see. When Miller was on top, he started to unload. He was able to land some big, heavy shots that left hand, just jackhammered him. You can see the lumps on Hallett's forehead. Frank Trick going to call time, bringing the ringside position in. Fight's over. Tyson Sipovon Miller improves to two and zero. Oh. As this fight has come to an end after the uh, doctor inspected Holland Gracie, he saw enough. It's over. Miller, two and zero. We're gonna sh we're gonna show you what he saw. Watch the eyes. He's telling him to follow his finger. Take a look at Holland Gracie's eyes. All of a sudden, then he goes over and he plays. He brings it over the other way. Look at Holland. He's having a hard time following it. Look, it goes up, and he's just staring straight at the doctor. That's why the doctor called the fight. Tyson Miller sees the wave off and goes, oh, I think I won. 24-year-old Tyson Sipabong Miller getting it done with that nasty ground and pound. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, upon the completion of round number one, and upon the advice of the cake side position referee, Frank Trigg weighs off the contest. The winner by TKO Tyson, Super Bowl Miller. And it is indeed a Miller time to wrap up the proceedings here at Bellator 277's preliminary portion of the card. A huge crowd already on hand here at the Shark Tank, the Bay Area, welcoming back Bellator MMA with open arms. And what a main card we have.
coming up for you at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on Showtime. Hey, to put a button on tonight's proceedings in the prelims, let's go back to Amanda and Josh at the fight desk. Maura, thank you oh so much. I'm not sure if I am exhausted after those prelims or pumped up. What about you? The prelims were absolutely amazing. We had a lot of prelims. We were a little nervous going, hey, are we going to get through all of these before the big time show starts? But guess what? They were the show tonight. So far, they were electric. And we are about to get to the main card. I do want to talk about uh, some of the fights coming up. Look, this is the biggest event in MMA so far this year. A night worthy of not just one, but two title fights. Let's start with the first one. We're going to see our co-main event. And this is the conclusion of the light heavyweight World Grand Prix, the best in the world there. You got Benin Nemakov going up against Corey Overtime Anderson. A million dollars on the line tonight, Josh. And that belt. Talk to us about the road each of them took to get here. Well, Anderson, and Corey Anderson had a rough road to begin with, though, but he, what he did very well was he understood that what he needed to do is establish his wrestling and mix it in the, mixing in the striking. He didn't do anything outside the realm that he knew he wasn't good at. He just kept picking these guys apart and established what he needed to do. Nemkov, a rematch with Phil Davis, was a tough fight. And Phil Davis came with a better game plan that time, but he still was able to out, to outwork him. And then Inglitis was another last-minute replacement for Anthony Rumble Johnson. That ended up being a really tough fight as well, because Inglitis came out and was able to actually drop Nemkov in the first round. And Nemkov... Stayed patient, weathered the storm, came out and had a great performance after that, gets the finish with the Kimura. The rest of this is, look, I've always said this, the two best guys are in the finals, and that's what you want to see in these tournaments. Absolutely. That's what we're getting And, and it really is, the two best guys. Uh, the two, two, best. two best guys in the world. I want to make sure we're clear on that. Yeah, Josh would uh, put himself in that category if he could there, just as the best guy in the world, because we know that's how he feels. Uh, let's talk about the main event coming up tonight. Look, I've been saying all night this rematch has been eight months in the making. This has really been years in the making. I mean, going into the last fight, Pitbull had the belt for years. You get A.J. McKee, young kid hot at the time coming in there he got that belt from him in less than two minutes what can we expect in the rematch you're gonna see I think you're gonna see something different from AJ you're gonna see him be a little bit more composed you're gonna see him be relaxed you're gonna see a, a little bit sense I want to say sense of confidence he always has that but there's a word I'm looking for that I can't find normally a man saves me here but in this nah, situation I'm gonna let you flip through this one really what it comes down to is that AJ now is the one that has the target on his back whereas Patricio it was him for years AJ just gotta be patient he's gonna let the fight develop he's gotta be explosive when he needs to be Patricio he's gotta fight him in a phone booth. He's got to change that game plan. He's got to make sure that he takes the center of the cage and have AJ come to him so he can slip on the inside and try to land the big knockout shot. That's what he's got to look for. I'm, I'm looking forward to this fight because I want to see how much different it will be from the first fight. Yeah, Patricio said, look, I was too calm. I know Big John disagrees with that. Uh, Patricio said he was too calm going into that last one. He said, I'm going to be aggressive every single time we touch. When you've been the king that long, like Patricio has, it really comes down to you keep thinking you're just going to keep knocking him down. Keep lining him up and I'll keep knocking him down. In this situation, it was different. Now what's going to be like now that AJ's got the target on his back and Patricio's the young lion, the older lion, but still the one having to come after him now. Almost 10 years separating these guys. AJ McKee just turned 27 just about a week a ago. Baby. He is still so young. Uh, those are the last two fights you're going to see tonight. Let's take a look at the entirety of the main card. To begin, you get the heavyweights. Linton Vassell going up against Tim Johnson there, Tim Johnson, working his way back toward a title shot. But Litton Vizel says, look, if I win this fight, I deserve the shot at the title in my next fight. And then you get Aaron Pico, who is on an absolute tear right now. He is shooting up those featherweight rankings, and he is going up against Adley Edwards. Adley Edwards, if you do not know, took this fight on less than two weeks' notice. He is so confident in it. We will see you at 10 Eastern in just a couple minutes on Showtime. is here. The featherweight title rematch between new division king AJ Mercenary McKee and former champ Patricio Pitbull. Plus the light heavyweight Grand Prix final champion Vadim Nemkov, Nemkov pouncing, versus top contender Corey Overtime Anderson. It's game time, baby. It's a Bellator blockbuster. Tonight, live on Showtime.
On April 15th, the biggest event of the year will go down, headlined by the highly anticipated rematch between AJ McKee and Patricio Pitbull, as well as the finale of the light heavyweight World Grand Prix between champion Vadim Nemkov and ground and pound specialist Corey Anderson. That's not all though, fight fans, so strap in as I give you four things to watch at Bellator 277. AJ McKee versus Patricio Pitbull. This is a rematch that everyone wants to see. Now, the real question is, will we have the same result? And we could, because AJ McKee is special. He's long, he's tall, he's fast. And that's where we're talking about. Oh! And he knows how to fight everywhere in the stand-up. His wrestling is great. His submission game is supreme. That type of stuff will tend to wear your gas tank out as the round goes on. It's done. So this guy can do it all. Patricio Pitbull has done it all. He has been one of the pillars of Bellator. This is a guy who is six and one in rematches and as the champion showed everyone just how great he could be. Now, Pitbull has to change. What he was doing before and what he was able to do in commanding the cage, he is unable to do against AJ McKee. He's gonna have to find a different path to victory. If you watch Pitbull early in his career, he was kind of a berserker. He would go after guys. He would chase them down and try to use his awesome power to put them out. Then he kind of changed, he got into taking the center of the cage, making his opponent come his way, and then unleashing beautiful counters with big power that put him out. He's unable to do that same thing against AJ. AJ knows it, AJ knows he can command the space. He's the one that's gonna control the distance and with his speed, he can be dangerous throughout the entire fight. Pitbull, unbelievable champion at one time. Can he come back and do it again? Absolutely, he's that good. Can he do it against AJ McKee? Only time will tell. The World Light Heavyweight Grand Prix with Vadim Nemkov versus Corey Anderson. The path to victory for both guys is close to the same. Corey Anderson needs to be the guy who has come into Bellator and utilized all aspects of his game. For a while, he was just trying to be the stand-up guy, which put him in danger because when you're standing up, you can hit someone and knock them out, or they can hit you and put you out, and that happened to Corey. He came into Bellator, and he just started being the old Corey. He used his wrestling. He took his opponents down after using his hands to get inside, and then he went to town with ground and pound that is incredibly dangerous. He knows how to posture, and he brings big power, not only with punches, but with devastating elbows. But Dean Nemkov, very fast for a light heavyweight. Great at wrestling, great in the stand-up, good submission game. The guy can do it all, and that's why he's the champ. The path for Vadim Nemkov is to stop the takedown attempts when they come from Corey Anderson. If he can do that and control the distance of the fight, he's going to remain the light heavyweight champion, and he will become the light heavyweight World Grand Prix winner. Well, fight fans, that's a wrap for what to watch at Bellator 277. Is there a fight I missed that you're hyped to see? If there is, let me know in the comments. And while you're there, give us a thumbs up if you're as excited as I am for this absolutely stacked card from San Jose. Make sure you tune into the prelims this Friday on Bellator MMA YouTube and check your local providers for the main event. April 15th is a fight night you can't miss. Before he steps there, watch how he gets heavy on that leg, so he needs to be careful of it. Juan Archuleta watching very closely. Juan Archuleta, of course, our bantamweight world champ. Nice little tricky move by Corey right there. When we asked Corey what he was going to do, he said this, I'm going to take him down, I'm going to ground and pound, I'm going to beat him up, I'm going to get my arm raised. He's working at it. He's got it. See, look at his left arm. He's got that far side underhook. That makes it very difficult for Melvin to get out of this position. 
Corey said many times fighting for Bellator feels like a new beginning for me. He began wrestling in the third grade. His brother was a wrestler as well. Ben Askren was one of his coaches his senior year of college. Yes, like this is exactly what Corey Anderson wants. This is what he, when he was talking to him about, I just need to be me. I was trying to be somebody I was before. I was... Nice little hook sweep by Melvin Bell out there. Very nice. Corey said to be the best, you have to beat the best, and that's all that matters in the end, much to Josh's point. This is round one, Manhoff and Anderson. Good timing there by Corey. Nice change of levels by Corey. Timed that well. Big shots. Very big. It's a big, strong, heavy man on top. Many heavy shots. I gotta give Corey credit though because on that last takedown, right, Melvin, he had to wait for the time to be perfect. It's also a lot harder being as tall as Corey Anderson is for him to get his hips in this level to drop that low to get it on the takedown. Take away a little bit of that power, at least you hope you do. And one. Nice knee to the body by Corey Anderson. A good first five minutes inside the Bellator cage. The numbers attest to that, John. Yes, they do. Yeah. Melvin needs to stop looking for the one shot. He needs to start to go ahead and throw it and just set his little things up, little fans and then throw off of it. He's gonna get his back off that fence right now as well. Corey's doing a really good job with his fence, though. He's got Melvin guessing right now. Great job. Big heavy shots. A lot of people will look at what Corey was doing and think that he was going for an American. He's not. He's proving that by where he's having his arm holding the head also. You have no submission if you have that head involved. Though. That shot hurt Melvin right there, John. Yeah, it did. You can see him starting to cover up with both hands. Big elbows, postured up. And this is the point. Big elbows in this position. That's a big shot right there by Corey. Todd Anderson telling Melvin, you gotta move. You gotta protect yourself. Corey continues on. This fight is gonna be over. It is all over! Corey Anderson, victorious in his Bellator debut! Too many good blows in, brother. Easy, easy. Come on. I feel great, man. Went just like the plan. Me and Nicotone talked all week. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. We're going to do what we did from the beginning. New platform. I don't have to show. I don't have to do anything fancy. Do what we do. Uh, what I do in the gym. Mark Henry said the whole time. Do what you do in sparring. This guy can't keep with you. Nobody can. You know, that's what I did. It's like what I do in sparring. Just be fighting whoever can give me the title. Either Nimkov or Phil Davis. Whoever's fighting for the title, I want to win. I'm ready. Let's go. So you would take Phil Davis or Nemkov, tell me. Whoever wins the belt, whoever got that strap, come see me. Sounds good to me. Outstanding performance, welcome to Bellator. Looking for those challenges, and you're looking for those targets, and the one thing that, oh, lead right uppercut lands for Yakshimurda. The one thing the tournament does, it gives you that target from the beginning. <laughs> and Yakshimurda targeted Anderson's face. Half kick to the lead leg of Anderson. Anderson trying to return the favor. And it gone in the first round. And the winner of this fight will meet Ryan Bader, who was with us tonight here at the Mohegan Sun Arena. Anderson has split a pair of fights with UFC led heavyweight champion Jan Blahowicz and now wanting to become a Bellator MMA champion for the first time, but needs to get past Yang Shimuradov here in the quarterfinals. Winner will face Bader in the semifinals, and then, of course, in our main event tonight, Vadim Nemkov, newly minted as the 205 pound champion, defending the title for the first time against Phil Davis, looking to become the first ever Bellator MMA two time light heavyweight champion. That's a rematch. Is 
Back to the center of the cage. And there's that right hand that Yekshin Murdoch will throw so often and so violently. That's what Corey has to be careful of. That's what, why Ryan Bader was talking about. you got to move to your right because you want to be able to take some of the power off of that shot and make it have even more distance. And Anderson running out of space, looking for that takedown, defended well by Yekshimodadov along the fence. He says it's five rounds. Nice knee to the inside oh, by Corey. Nice short right uppercut again as Yekshimodadov really wants to establish that right uppercut. These two made their professional MMA debuts a year apart. Yekshimodadov in March of 2012, Anderson in March of 2013, and on the exit, that right uppercut again by Yekshimodadov coming in. Absolutely. Nice. Nice counter strike by Corey. Do Dovlajan going after that big right hand again. He needs to set that thing up. Nice. Under a minute remaining here in the opening round. Both of them going for the kick. High kick just missing for Anderson. Nice kick. That right there is exactly what you want to see from Corey. Straight jab right down, followed by a straight right cross. Just keep those shots clean. There's a spinning heel kick. Uh, knocked Corey. Did not land clean, but it definitely rattled him a little bit. You can see that Corey felt that. And Yaksha Muradov, man, really winding up with that right hand. Muradov definitely not taken aback by the, the magnitude of the moment or the, the spotlight came in here very calm, cool and collected and has gone about his business, John. He's gone about his business. That was a very nice kick to the body. You see Yags sitting there tapping it like, oh, go ahead, hit it again. That just tells you, oh yeah, it landed and I felt it. Anderson looking to secure the takedown. The unofficial scorecard belongs to Big John McCarthy. Gave the opening round to Anderson, who's looking for the takedown. Well defended by Yag Shimuradov. Very well defended. The reason for that 10-9 to Anderson is he landed the bigger shots during the round. Even though Yag Shimuradov had that, the, probably the biggest shot with that kick, it was the volume that Anderson was able to put on it. Very nice movement. Good head movement by Corey. Nice feints. Stiff jab by Anderson. Yagshin Murdoch, one of the when he's planting his feet, you notice he's staying kind of still, there's no head movement. That's giving Corey the ability to kind of tee off on it. Nice. Oh. Behind the line, he's behind the line. Here you go. I love how calm Yagshin Murdoff is. This is exactly yeah, the way he was that. When, I, when I was refereeing. I mean, he was out there, it was almost like he was falling asleep at one point, and then he exploded. I'm like, man, this guy is, he's just relaxed in the cage. His right hand as uh, Anderson changes levels. But again, Yagshin Murdoff able to defend the takedown with the underhook as Anderson wide base being employed by Yagshin Murdoff. He's digging that underhook. It's a nice job by Yaksha Muradov to defend. Corey now switching to the single leg. He wants to run that pipe, turn him out. This is where these guys coming from places like Turkmenistan, Russia, they're so good in the wrestling game. They're very difficult to take down. Nice job by Corey Anderson to get the fight there. Final minute of the second in full mount. Ground and pound here, an opportunity for Anderson. As of course, Yagshamuradov just keeping himself as close to Anderson's body as possible, trying to maybe force a stand up. Really nice job by Corey, taking his leg, bringing it up. What he's doing is he's extending those arms since Yags is trying to pull him close. He just needs to start opening up, frame that head against the big shots with the elbows. Out. Yes, the elbow attack from Corey Anderson with the ground and pound. And again, Yagshamuradov trying to close the distance as Anderson just focusing on delivering as many punishing strikes as possible in order to try to get this fight stopped here in the second round, but there's only 10 seconds left. Anderson with another nasty elbow. Big shots. That's why you're seeing Yang starting to move right now. And Yang Shamurdov surviving that storm of strikes in the final moments of the second round. His first appearance in a Bellator MMA cage with a blue tape around his gloves, and Anderson bringing the fight to Yang Shamurdov here in round three. Corey really starting to open it up. Go back to those keys to victory when I said he needs to use the full arsenal of MMA tools that he has. That's what he's doing right now in the cage.
Anderson changes levels again, looking for the takedown. And again, Yang Shamuradon, well, trying to make it difficult for him. Not as difficult that time around, John. Beautiful job of sliding that leg out, hooking his leg behind it, just pulling him down. This is what makes Corey Anderson so vicious when he gets people down. He has got great body positioning. He's able to trap the arm like he is right now. That right arm of Yag Shamurdov with that lace. He'd like to pull it back a little bit if he could or drive Yags forward exactly what he just did. Now he's getting back to the mouth position. A lot of time on the clock. Mount, ground, and pound. Yag Shamurdov trying to stave off this attack. Now forced to give up his back. Anderson is riding Yag Shamurdov, dropping those nasty elbows. Corey just needs to be very smart, target his area, and hit it with power. Anderson sinking his seventh knockout win. Look into the liver of that patented ground and pound. Yang Shamuradov being warned by the referee, and the fight has been stopped. Corey Anderson advances to the semifinals against Ryan Bader. Big, big damage done by Corey Anderson in that third round. I mean, the first thing I was thinking was, Nick Atone give me this position all the time, my coach, and it sucks. So I know if I get him there, I got to do what he says, you know? My coaches, they instilled the coach, Ricardo, Nick, the ground game is all of them. I'm just a, a product of their environment. The striking, Mark Henry, without them, the performance would have been impossible. When I got him down, literally was just thinking, what does Nick do to me when we get here? And the same thing he showed me. You got to float, keep your knees pinched. If he turns, you got to be able to go with him and stop, put the elbows. Ricardo says, put the hands to the face, keep the forearm in his neck, hold him, hit him short elbows, a little hammer fist, <laughs> posture up, throw big. So the only thing going through my mind was do what we do every day. Well, that was two beautiful performances in a row. That now moves you into the semifinals of the Light Heavyweight World Grand Prix. Ryan Bader, step on up here real quick. Your opponent, you know already, is going to be Ryan Bader. Ryan. Corey, that was impressive. Came in here, imposed your will, did what you had to do, and now you got me. Yeah. No, no, now you got me. <laughs> That's As the words of DC, one person in the group always knows. <laughs> Love the eyes. <laughs> well, buddy, you ready? Buddy, you ready? Fight! Semifinals are underway. How many times have we talked about Ryan Bader and the wrestling and the blast double, and he has scored stunning opening round knockouts. Bader needs to think about really just using his footwork. Circle out, don't go backwards, but circle out. Oh, big, big shot from Corey Anderson. Bader immediately covers up. And swing it for the fences, swing it for the finals, swing it for that title shot that's eluded him his entire career. Lands a big right elbow, the ground and pound pouring down, and it's over. Watch what happens. Beautiful head movement, and that right hand catches Bader right behind the ear. It disrupts him. He goes into a shell. He tried to get himself out. Watch the right hand. Corey moves his head off center line. Beautiful right hand right behind the ear on Bader. And you see him starting to shell up. He did try to move himself to try to grab the body and control Corey Anderson. And he just was unable to do it. In Arizona, y'all might hate me, but it's still my favorite vacation place. So you will see a lot of my face. <laughs> You did a beautiful job in the opening moments there. He threw a shot, you slipped your head off the center line and threw a right hand over the top that hit him behind the ear and disrupted him. At that moment, you went after him. Did you know you were gonna finish him off at that? I mean, we knew it. We, me and Mark Henry, the scientist, mad scientist. We saw it, I sparred with him, I knew he had a good jab. He leans into his jab, he doesn't step. He leans, so we worked a combo. We, we had two combos for him. One was starting with an overhand, the other one starting with the jab. And the overhand landed, and the other three punches didn't have to land, and I knew it was over. He wasn't getting up. How good does it feel to have a win like that that you know puts you in control of your own destiny, and now you know you will be facing 
someone for the light heavyweight world title and the Grand Prix world title. I mean, as for my career when I, it feels amazing. For everything that I've been through, everything I've done, you see my career, man, I came in the top with three fights on the regional circuit, and to make it here is truly a blessing. But as Ryan being a friend of mine, I hate the fact that we had to fight and had to happen like this, but somebody had to lose. You're right, someone had to. I want to tell everyone, congratulate Corey Anderson. You are the first man in the finals of the World Light Heavyweight Grand Prix. from making it a reality, he's the undefeated A.J. McKee. He makes his professional debut from Long Beach, California, introducing A.J. Mercenary McKee. Round number one. Fast start for A.J. McKee. Tonight's Fight Clock is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original Pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. The son of Antonio McKee, longtime fighter, outstanding wrestler. But his son, a lot of confidence in his striking. Marco Spinilla in the blue gloves, red gloves for AJ McKee. Bellator debut for both, third pro MMA bout for Bonilla, pro MMA debut for McKee. Welcome to the deep end of the pool, kid. <laughs> MMA veteran Antonio McKee, who you almost fought. That's true. That's true. I did one time. And now here's his son. And now here's his son. Thanks for making me feel old, son. And I'm, older, than, and I'm older than you. Thank you. And Antonio McKee's grandkids fight. <laughs> <laughs> then we're checking out. Yeah, totally. Take down for, for the darts choke. Going hard for the darts. See, he might have the bicep, and he lost it now the transition. Yeah. Smooth transition to the back, but only one hook in so far. Marcos Benia said, my biggest asset as a fighter is my intelligence. I can assess situations, but no time to assess. Yeah, he's in trouble now. Deeper, oh, they can choke. That is the top, and the victory for AJ McKee in his pro mixed martial arts debut. A great start for A.J. McKee. James Barnes has won all four of his fights in the first round. It's still a sport, Jimmy, in which so many start 25, 26, 27 years old. Yeah, very true. A.J. working hard for the guillotine here. Very early. He might have it. Barnes trying to walk the cage and pays the price. But he does get out of the guillotine. Reckless throw by A.J. McKee. Let him go. You see already some blood coming out of the mouth of James Barnes. Has four fights under his belt and then class to the total of six minutes and 20 seconds. This one isn't oh. going to go that far. Huge left. Over. Barnes in big trouble. It's over. Beautiful left hand over the top, right on the jaw. And that was all she wrote. AJ McKee. Keep an eye on this kid at 145. With the second generation, with the AJ McKees and all the young guns in Bellator, the previous generation of fighters, Jimmy, they were just turning pro at 26, 27, 28. Now you have a whole new wave of young stars who are starting young because this is what they always wanted to do. AJ McKee grew up in the gym. That's what this generation does. First round, you ready? You ready? Fight clock brought to you by Miller Lite, the original Pilsner Cheers. It's Miller time. And immediately, Donaldson staggered and he needs to get in deep, but he ate a kick for it. All you see right now is confidence. AJ just walking through the punches of Donaldson. Coming off a highlight reel knockout in his last fight. Well, two professional fights that lasted less than four minutes. Nasty cut over the eye. That could add some urgency to a guy who's already fighting hard. And that's in a bad spot. Great throw. 
McKee was raised for this would be an understatement. Ronda Rousey wasn't the only one with a parent that wake him up with an arm bar. Yeah. Antonio McKee, outstanding fighter. Watch it! Now, this is a position he likes. He loves Darce chokes. He loves anacondas. Going for the Darce. It's what I meant about that reach advantage being so important on the ground. Oh, that's a nasty That cut. is brutal, and it's in a bad spot. It's definitely going to bleed in the eye. The good news is it's not on the lid. And over the power.